welcome everybody. Uh, planning board meeting Monday, November 27th. And first thing on the agenda is the downtown corridor project update. Mr. Del Torre, are we going to give an introduction or turn it over or? Sure, we come up Yeah, come on up to the table. Feel free to bring up an extra chair. And just anybody who's speaking needs to use a microphone. Sure. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, again, thank you for having us here to present an update. We're uh, to the downtown corridor project, We're trying to trying to make our way uh, to as many boards and as many meeting requests uh, as we can as the project continues to progress to 100% uh, design. Uh, with me tonight is VHB, uh, John Bouchard and uh, Greg Russell. Um, John will do the more formal kind of update. Uh, we have some boards uh, that were used at the most recent public hearing. I think the last time we met at the planning board was uh, February, I believe. Because my right. year. February, March. Yeah. Um, so I would try to focus a little bit on a yeah, few, few numbers. <laughs> That's the, uh, <coughs> but again, it's just kind of a good update. Uh, kind of the project schedule, where the design stands, some of the major components um, the planning board might not have seen um, and discuss, you know, some of the main topics that have come, you know, come from the recent public meetings and, uh, that we have had. I just want to keep it, keep it quick and concise. If there are any questions, uh, we'll certainly take questions from, you know, from the public. The public has a couple of questions already, and uh, either John or myself program. Sure well, we're, we're giving you two hours, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So I think, uh, again, John Bouchard will probably take it from here and just kind of go through the project limits. I thought you had the first hour and a half. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Running ahead of schedule. <laughs> I heard somebody wanted to do the meeting. I'm not sure. <laughs> but again, I think the best way to you know, just jump in and have the yep. PHP go through the project. Thank you. Great. Uh, thanks, Dave. Um, just want to give a brief overview, uh, kind of review where, where we're at right now, the steps and process moving forward, uh, and then take any questions. Uh, not sure if anyone was able to attend the uh, public forum we had at the end of September at the Senior Center, which was um, uh, you know, a, a little bit more detailed update on the project, project specifics. Um, that uh, VHP has been working with the town on and uh, moving forward. The, and uh, I'll give an overview on that, the specific elements of the design for the project and then, then kind of like the next steps. Um, the town sought funds through the Transportation Improvement Program TIP uh, through the regional planning agency. So uh, Hopkinton sits in the MAPC region, which includes Boston. And um, uh, many of the towns, you know, from Boston, uh, Hopkinton's on kind of the border. Um, North Grove, Marlboro, some of the other border towns in South Grove that, that kind of make that up. So we're always, the, the town is competing for funds with larger communities. Boston, you know, takes a big piece uh, of that um, uh, of that tip. Uh, obviously, bigger community, a lot more uh, project needs, big bridges and stuff that are rolled in. But the town's been patient moving forward. So there's some challenges that come with uh, going in for uh, the state funding or state and federal funding. Uh, when you when you go through the tip process, uh, you um, the mass dot kind of the tip process kind of dictates the design criteria that you need to follow. So we are following complete streets criteria for the overall corridor. Project limits run from Wood Street to Ash Street. Um, the uh, uh, again the funding kind of dictates the framework on the schedule where you follow the tip on the you know on that funding cycle is you know what you're shooting for for a target. So constant focus on, on those dates and if um, if we miss something then you know we're gonna keep looking to the the uh, MAPC to amend the tip the calendar so we can we can still capture the funds that have been programmed for the project. Um, the uh, you know and then MassDOT will be administering you know is overseeing the design um, but it will also be administering the construction when the project does go to construction. They'll have a resident engineer on site with assistance to oversee the contractor uh, to handle any day-to-day -day activities that you know on any uh, uh, issues questions that come up uh, during construction and, and stuff like that but 
you know, we're, we're a few years away from actually putting a shovel in the ground at this point. The overall project goals that the, um, you know, the town was looking for was improve traffic operations and reduce congestion through the downtown, improve bicycle and pedestrian accommodations and safety, obviously to enhance Main Street and to improve and upgrade the public and private utilities as part of the project. Um, the overall project, I gave you the kind of the limits from Wood Street to Ash Street, but some of the proposed improvements that were um, paramount to, uh, you know, project success was to realign uh, the Grove Street and Cedar Street intersection through the downtown, uh, expansion of the town common and green space initially, uh, adding both on-road and separated bike lanes, new sidewalks on both sides of Main Street for the entire project limits. Um, Removal of overhead utilities and undergrounding between Summer Street and Ash Street. Uh, street lighting and street furniture should be added throughout the project and then adding more off street parking. To improve traffic operations, you know, we first did a, uh, a traffic study, conducted um, safety analysis of, uh, the, of key intersections along uh, the corridor. You know, there's about 17,000 vehicles a day that are on Main Street. Um, bicycle accommodation. Uh, Within the car, there are a couple different options: on road, we, you know, in the lane, separated bike lanes, and then a two-way separated bike lane. I'm going to go over those in, in one minute. Pedestrian amenities, ADA ramps are, uh, you know, a little bit um, are not prevalent right now along Main Street. And then with new sidewalks going through there, we'll have new, all new ADA ramps throughout the project limits and all the side streets and uh, you know, through driveways that is, as necessary. Um, parking, you know, we'll work with the town and the Chamber of Commerce on parking. We know there's been some impact. We're looking to, you know, mitigate and, uh, and get new off-street parking that'll mitigate some of the stuff on, you know, directly on Main Street. And then the major intersections, obviously, Wood Street, Cedar and Grove, and Marathon Way, or Hayden Road and Marathon Way, and Ash Street are the, you know, kind of the major traffic contributors um, in areas that needed to have upgrades for safety. So as part of our traffic operations, <coughs> improved traffic operations, we looked at on-road bicycle facilities where bikes are going to be in the uh, shoulder area, and that occurs, <coughs> excuse me, that occurs uh, approaching Wood Street, and then at the very, you know, at the very beginning of the project, and then Hayden Road to Ash Street. So bikes are shown. I'm going to take the microphone with me if I could. So. Um, bikes are shown on the shoulders and um, within the travel lane. That's when it's, uh, you know, you're sharing lanes with um, <coughs> vehicles. And, it, you know, it's narrower through that section, especially at the very beginning and end of the project because we're transitioning to what the existing conditions are. Then we look to what we're calling a uh, on-road or a separated bike lane where we have bike shoulders, accommodating shoulders, five foot lanes on each side of the roadway so the roadway is a little bit wider but it's also adjacent to parking so we'd have two travel lanes one in each direction in the middle then we have a variable width shoulder the parking lane and then we have bikes on the outside of the shoulders so those would be single direction separated bike lanes and then the last alternative is where we have the two-way um, separated bike lanes which would be on which will be on one side of the road as we're um, as we're approaching the seat, you know, through the Cedar and Grove Street intersection. Uh, just so I can, you know, I guess the way it was kind of laid out was Cedar to Hayden Row with separated bike lanes, one, you know, lane on each side for bikes, and then on the separated two-way from Wood Street to Cedar Street are the best, you know, best alternatives. Um, let's see. Can you repeat those pictures before? Can you repeat that last part you just said, the, which is? I'm sorry. The, the last thing, the very last thing you said? The last thing I said was that the single separated bike lanes run from Cedar to Hayden Row. So that's bike lanes on each side in following the traffic direction. And then the, the separated two-way bike lane is really from Wood Street to Cedar Street. That's where there's bike lanes on one side going in both directions. The whole length. From, from Cedar to Wood Street? Yep, okay. On both sides? One side? No, one one side. From, Cedar yep. to, from Wood to Cedar, there's two lane, two bikes on one side, separated from traffic. Right. And then from Cedar to Hayden Row, it's one bike lane on each side following the direction of traffic. Right. Is there a cross area for that? At the, inter at the intersection. Okay. 
Can I ask? And I'm going I'm to go over that in a moment. Yep. Okay. So from Cedar to Wood Street, where it's a two two way bike lane, are, is there no are there no parked cars on that side? Or the, uh, so correct. The parking the car, parking for cars is all the other side, and the bike lane is on one side. Okay. Yes. <coughs> um, as as part of improving our traffic operations, first I just wanted to go over. This is the Wood Street intersection. Signalized now. Uh, there's only really a one lane approach as you know so any vehicle that wants to make a left turn into wood street kind of queues up the traffic on main street that wants to go through so we've done a little bit of widening on the corner we've teed up wood street as best we can and then the stop bar has been moved a little bit further back because any vehicles making this right turn you know the the stop bar if someone was in the stop bar closer to the intersection there's going to be a conflict so we've moved that back we've tried to tee this up a little bit, we've taken a little out of this nose and then moved the stop bar back so we can improve operations here. With this two lane here, or like a left turn lane and a through lane, when someone is in this left turn lane to make the turn into Wood Street, it's not going to impede the through movement on Main Street, which is a major congestion point existing now. So how many cars can queue up to turn left without blocking? Uh, that's going to be about five or six cars going to be able to queue up there. Okay. That's good. And in the, um, would be the uh, southwest direction, we've, uh, you have a, a right turn lane to go onto Wood Street and a through lane, and we have a bike lane in between those two lanes. New industry standard is, you know, the bikes are supposed to be in, either in the travel lane or, or adjacent to the, the traveling Late. So we can't really have them separated at the curb line, although it, it, you know predominant you know I guess uh, rule of thumb has been you know you, with bikes generally has been stay far right, um, but when you introduce a right turn lane like that, you create a conflict with the bike in that right turn lane because we want to run this with a right turn arrow, an overlap because there's a significant right turn movement there, and if you have bikes that want to be going straight, now you've created a conflict in this area. So industry standard has changed such that the bike lane is adjacent to the through movement of traffic if it's going obviously through following the course of traffic. So as you're as you're approaching um, the, the intersection. Uh, intersection, we have we have a separated bike lane on this side, yeah. comes up to the intersection and it crosses over and any bikes that are in this this stretch would be in the lane in between the right turn lane and the through lane on Main Street. That's and, the way it's, it's laid out right And now. that's okay because you don't think that <clears throat> someone might inadvertently forget that they're taking a right-hand turn. And I, I, I understand. I'm, I'm a, I've been made that mistake myself. And then I realize, oh, wait, i got to turn. And someone cut. And that per person on the bike is in trouble. The person on the bike is in trouble, but, it, you, you know, the, the person driving in, in the lane is responsible to observe and make sure. I mean, if That's in the perfect world, though. I understand, but I mean, <laughs> we, we all operate a motor vehicle to the, to the laws and the rules of the road. Right. So before you make a right turn, I assume, we would assume that you're going to at least look and make sure there's nothing behind you or to the right of you when you make that turn. Well, if I may expound on that, just because I want to make it very, very clear of my opinion on this matter, is that um, I've been hit twice last year riding a bicycle mm -hmm. by astute drivers that are uh, due diligently looking supposedly and I've broken my ankle and bruised up really really bad so just saying whatever we think is supposed to happen in the real world doesn't happen like that no I understand that okay the, 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 let, let me say that we're kind of following industry standard and and um, what Ashto the design guide is is dictating that bikes are supposed to be in the lane, Can or I ask adjacent a, to the lane. A quick question. On, yes, ma'am. Um, I'm all, all all for the bike lanes, but you have the two-way bike lane on one yeah. side. Do yeah. you have to have bike lanes on both sides in that case? J just in this area here, we have the two-way. If anyone's coming out of Reserve Street, yeah, then they would be Catching. anyone that's on that might you know the the separated two-way bike lane is the safest alternative for people traveling along Main Street. Yeah. However, there are more experienced bikers that feel more comfortable being in the shoulder, traveling with traffic, than being in a separated bike lane. And we've, we've, we've kind of worked with both. 
So just really this stretch here, just where we're queuing up this traffic light is where we have a short stretch that would be a bike lane only for the traffic light essentially. Because traffic, the bike traffic is going to be on the separated southerly side of Main Street. So our queue here is only if we have someone, tech, you know, theoretically coming out of Reserve Street or someone who may be riding in the shoulder that feels comfortable riding in the shoulder versus you know, riding in the uh, in the separated bike lane. So it's it kind is, of like it the local case. Kind of like the local person the express. Yes. Yeah. Yes. How do you? I, I since just about every trip up Main Street, I notice somebody not paying attention to a sign, a light, etc. Mm -hmm. How? What's the experience level of people actually crossing the street? <laughs> and going into the bike lane versus somebody just staying on the side and going down. And how do you discourage either physically or some other way somebody who's going to say, I'm going westbound, I'm on the north side, you want me to switch to the south side, I'm not going to do that, I'm just going to continue straight. Well, any biker could be in a travel lane. That's the legal laws of the yep. road. Mm -hmm. So it's generally the more experienced uh, biker that feels comfortable riding in the shoulder, riding with traffic, a commuter even, that is going to utilize you know, that shoulder lane for um, traveling along Main Street. The separated bike lane, again, is our um, primary. What we consider our primary and most, you know, the, the, let's say the safest alternative to encourage and promote bicycle ridership along Main Street. There are going to be the experienced runner. You know, it's just it's it's runners same way. They sometimes like to run in the street and they run long distances and they as long as they're observing traffic laws and you know pedestrian crossings and stuff like that then you know, they're legally able to either run with or against traffic and it, sometimes it's, it's user preference, it's how they feel most comfortable. But the separated bike lane is the safest alternative for promoting bicycle use along Main Street and, and that's been in, in discussions in coordination with the Upper Charles Trail Committee, you know, trying to promote increased bicycling you know, through town and to the, uh, to the other trails. Frank. Yes, uh, I just want to ask a couple of questions. Um, <coughs> one is about the format. Uh, sorry, I was a little bit late. So uh, it's it's all right. We can bring up questions about each section as he, he goes yeah. through them. And um, I understand there's been forums about this and everything. And I've heard back, and I have opinions. That I, I know Gary has opinions. People are uh, waiting to, to, to talk about this. So I don't want to hold up anything further. But um, on this chart specifically, uh, you don't have a crosswalk that was a very big bone of contention and was hard fought for and won, and it's not included here. So I'm a little bit worried that it's being left Where out. That? Where is Where that? Look at that? Uh, across from the um, the center, um, the, respite yes, the respite center? center, where they can cross from that side street that's shown uh, to the respite center. And You're saying up here? To a little yeah. bit to the right, about there, three inches. There was an existing crosswalk in this area. You saying was you yeah. was an existing crosswalk in this by area. the respite center, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah, and that's not in the future plans. That's not in the future plans. That does not sit well with me and probably a lot of people. Mm. Um, also, that some history to this uh, intersection. That's one of the oldest intersections in town. Uh, but also, it, the reason that the green area. Sorry, Jen. That's okay. <laughs> the reason that the green area is there is to slow traffic going down onto Wood Street. And uh, so the, the T connection, as you described it, uh, that makes it a little bit difficult for other turns, because uh, it's, it's kind of constricting it, is there for a purpose. So let's not work at a cross purpose to what public safety is with from the police and the fire department's uh, concerns. Uh, they have to meld with what the traffic concerns are. So I'm not sure if, if you're aware of that, and also that Longer term, maybe six, seven years down the line, there hopefully will be another street in town next to 495. There'll be a bypass road, so there'll be less traffic at this intersection. It's not the case now, but it's, it's good to know for the future. Um, right now, people do come up from the west to east, uh, and they do kind of make two lanes there, and it's not really marked that way. So I, I'm glad that you're, you're adding that in. Uh, coming from Wood Street onto uh, Main Street, or West Main Street, there are spaces and markings for two lanes, and people often, because of the angle, don't 
utilize them that way. There's kind of whatever way they're going, that's the way it's like they treat it like a single lane. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe a better signage or something could help. But um, as far as this intersection goes, uh, generally I'm, I'm happy with the improvements. Um, but overall, the, this is why I brought the structure. You guys don't mention the Pleasant Street intersection with Main Street at all. And um, that's a major intersection, major traffic. And uh, it could be major, major congestion. Yeah, I'm not sure if he's gotten there yet, based uh, on the but, second. Yeah. Well, it's not. In, it's not in any, any of the it's notes. Not, it, it wasn't at the forum either. That right. I brought that question up at right. the forum. Right. It's a concern to me too. But um, apparently, it doesn't rise to. Um, but you can speak to. Speak I'll, to I'll speak to Pleasant Street in a moment. Just right. staying on this location. Sure. If I could just okay. clarify, sure. and then come back. Um, you said this green space here. The general way it juts out, you can see where the old sidewalk is kind yes, of where that. Yes, it yeah. was further. It was further back here. Mm -hmm. We've done this to slow that traffic down to to promote a shorter pedestrian crossing. Right. We have a, a right turn lane that's going to have an overlap um, right turn arrow to make that turn, but to promote the crossing across Wood Street and to improve on the safety of pedestrians <coughs> across Main West Main Street. Um, we, we've tightened up that intersection a little bit, not to facilitate a faster movement, but to control it better. Well, I live down there, and I'm a little sad to see that faster move. No, <laughs> <laughs> a little sad about that. No, um, it, uh, can I ask a really simple question? Is there? I assume that there is new signaling going in with all of this. New signaling you is know, equipment. Like, yes. Yes. It, all new. All smart lights. Yes, smart. So that smart, so they well, yeah. LEDs and all that. LEDs. No, all, so they well, so they respond to traffic. Yes, it's they'll, the, they'll the fellow be, behind you is nodding yeah, enthusiastically. He, he's the traffic guy. <laughs> if I sit down and he takes over, I'm gonna quietly just slip out. And say, Thank you. Okay. Okay. Glad you had a nice day. Okay. Okay. No, so no, the, all those lights just, that just are so responsive yes, to the all traffic. All of the traffic flow. signal equipment throughout the project will be upgraded with new, um, newer equipment. <coughs> You know, louvered back plates so you can see them with solar glare. Yeah. Um, either pavement detectors or we'll have video detection, and, and we just haven't got to that stage at this point. Yeah, I just such that you, you know it will be, um, it will um, change according to traffic. You know, by the by the demand, um, and then also additional signage. You know, throughout uh, throughout the project. Fran, what, Friend. Mr. Chairman, I'll yield my time to the esteemed uh, citizen here, who I know is an avid uh, bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> so please. Um, so I, I've got a. You have to introduce yourself names. and the address. Gary Trendle, 31 Chamberlain Street. Sorry. Um, I've got a, a couple of comments and a couple of questions um, and a little bit of background. Um, I this year I've biked uh, almost 2,500 miles, most of it in Hopkinton, so I know these roads really, really well. Uh, I've also just recently started a bicycle safety coalition um, with the intent to um, you know, just be an advocate for bicycle safety in general. Um, and I've shared these plans uh, with some of the other people in the coalition to get their input. Um, and actually, Dave and I are actually meeting, uh, I think, on Thursday as well to talk uh, in a little bit more detail. So you can't bring anything up too difficult because we've had at least two meetings scheduled that have been canceled. So like I if know. you log one <laughs> out from somewhere, <laughs> it's going to really be kind of like not, you know, not cool. Yep, I know. <laughs> pneumonia. I got pneumonia. <laughs> yeah. We can bike through that. All that biking. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyways, um, a couple of questions first. So does the does the bike lane, or just remind me, does the bike lane continue down Main Street on the north side of Main Street uh, to the side of Wood Street on the... You're, you're saying yes. beyond the project limits? There's no additional bike lane, uh, you know, that's outside this, the scope okay. of this okay. project right now. Um, and, then, and then second question, um, how long is the, the two-lane uh, two section of the bike lane? The, where the, the where they're both, where two lanes both separated? On the same side. I, I just have, I'll have to look that up for you. I don't okay. have that, you know. So on the plans, I can, I can just... But it's from, it's from Wood Street yeah. to Cedar. Oh, to Cedar. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. And, 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 and so a little bit more background, too. I, I was on the Upper Charles Trails Committee um, back when we first started talking about this, I'm a huge advocate for, for two-lane bike paths. Um, my concern, and this was brought up by the people that I talked about it as well, is, is, is he already mentioned that, you know, people aren't going to stop at a lot <coughs> and then cross over to go on the other side. Yeah. Um, and, and so I just think it's important that we, that we consider that. And I would argue that, that a good chunk of the cyclists 
that are riding down Main Street are in that experienced set um, who are not going to switch over. Mm -hmm. um, and and that, that was universal. I, I was actually probably the biggest advocate for it. Everybody said, no, I, I would just stay in, stay in the lane. I wouldn't even, wouldn't even bother with that. Um, the other thing I would ask is that as you're looking at bicycle flow, is that if it's a downhill road like it is coming down towards Wood Street there, mm -hmm. most cyclists are moving at a pretty high rate of speed. Candidly, I, I mean, I, I know what, how fast I'm going around that corner. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going 20 to 25 miles per hour, which is close to the speed limit. So it's less of a concern. Whereas when you're going uphill, it's a different story because the cyclists are going much, much slower um, than, than the, uh, the, the vehicle traffic. Um, what else do I have here? Um, So, so I guess you know, the way I look at this, and I hope everyone looks at this the same way, is kind of in two camps. In, you already mentioned there's two groups of cyclists. There's those that are out there riding for, for fitness, who are going to be going fast, who are not going to make that change over. And then there's those with families um, that, um, that, 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 that may use it. But I, I don't know, have you guys done any sort of analysis as to what kind of bicycle the volume you can expect? From this? I mean, it's 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 pure speculation at this point. I mean, it's as as we're looking at the corridor, we're looking at a complete streets layout. So yeah. we're accommodating pedestrians, bicycles, and and um, and vehicles in a limited right of way. So based on input from the Upper Charles Trails Committee and you know industry advocates, you know we we've we're, we're trying to accommodate here, but I, I don't have a uh, I don't have a uh, a, a number uh, percentage or uh, volume. Of uh, bicycles that are going to be using uh, using this at this time. Okay, and, and, and I guess what, what I hate to see is I'd hate to see us design this with this relatively short two lane bike path of which no one's mm -hmm. going to use. Mm -hmm. right. And as a cyclist, then what happens is I'm driving, I'm riding my bike on the other side of the street on the shoulder, and everyone starts yelling at me like, "Get in the bike lane! Get in the bike lane!" Right. And it just it creates a, a, a tension that that the, 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 the drivers of the vehicles don't like and the cyclists don't like. Mm -hmm. and, and I guess I, I'd ask is that I don't know if it's still an option, but you know, is, is it is it still open for debate as to whether or not that that two lane or that double bike lane uh, on one side is, is, is part of the plan. I mean, is it, is it an option, or have you guys looked at just doing a single bike lane on, on both sides of the street? I, I would like, I might defer that question to the town. I mean, the, the town, you know, we, we're implementing, you know, the design on the town's behalf, and we need to follow certain criteria, which I, you know, and I, I know, you know, we haven't had this uh, more face-to-face uh, -face discussion at this point, but to seek the funding that the town did they need to accommodate all those users and it was based on the initial input that they wanted to go to the separated you know bike lane um, and that's what's in uh, under review by by mass dot at this point any changes to that are going to you know may set us back in our overall um, approval on the project because it's going to change your parking it's going to change your right-of-way impacts it may change your utilities if, if things get moved around. So I, my, my, my response is, I don't want to say it's set in stone, that this, but that's what the town voted to pursue, and that's what we're moving forward with. I'm sure there's, you know, there can be some accommodations that can be re-looked at, but there's a potential that the project could be delayed as a result. So just to clarify, who, who voted on I, yeah. moving that forward? It, the, uh, I mean, not now. Yeah, the, 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 the history of, you know, the, the, the history of the bike lanes, um, you know, the, the, the specific change to a two-way bike lane actually came from the Upper Trials Committee. I don't know if you were on it. Um, during that time, uh, they presented to the Board of Selectmen. The Board of Selectmen liked the idea. The Board of Selectmen directed uh, myself and the consultant to change to a two-way bike lane. So as, as part of the town voted, you know, but, but, but uh, it, a, it, the Selectmen ultimately if, if decided to go that way. If I can add, because I think what is the reason for that not carrying that all the way through? It was a uh, right away constraint. Through. Because it, if you, I'm looking at the eastern end, and it looks like it actually takes more of the right away to do two separate bike lanes. Yeah, it was a it's a right away and a parking. Yeah, um, I think the park issue. Um, the, the, the right but why wouldn't is, everything just shift north? If you if you put the two bike lanes on the south. You eliminate one of the two uh, dividers between the traffic and the other one, and basically everything just shifts north. I believe 
you know, trying to carry a two-way bike lane on the south side through the project limits, um, you lose all the parking on that side of the street. And there's more businesses on that side. No, but I, I don't you understand. You have parking on both Bis sides of the street, you know, north of, or say east of, of Grove Street, where the west side, you, you, you don't have a lot of parking on the... the but why wouldn't side everything side? just shift north? In other words, if you, I'm looking at the blow-up, and I, it's, I might be thick, which people have told me. So <laughs> I'm looking at the single bite lane, then I'm looking at a divider, then I'm looking at parking, then I'm looking at traffic lane, two lanes, traffic lane, parking, another divider, and the other bike lane. So if you move that bike lane down, so on the bottom you have two-way bike lane, divider, parking, traffic, traffic, parking, it looks like it's the same width. In fact, it might actually be less width because instead of having two bands of red, you only have one. And just so I could clarify, you're saying, you're indicating from east of Grove Street? Yeah, uh, because I think the, one of the issues is it's not continuous. You're asking people to change sides of the street i'm getting a nod over there mm -hmm. that if it was south on the south side all the way across you would eliminate if you look at the top on the right so almost the last eight inches if you put your finger on just past walcott just yeah. past walcott yep there's a wide divider there so yeah. that goes away parking goes north the bike lane comes down follows the two bike lanes everything just shifts north so you still have the parking on both sides. And you're saying having two separated lanes on the north side? No, no south on the side. south side. The south so side. Side. Stay on the south side the whole time, and that way you don't have to worry about, in probably the busiest intersection in town, bikes now crossing too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It looks like it fits, and it might actually save you space. But again, as he, if I may, to the chair, what he said was that they've already submitted a plan. But no, 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 that was for the removing the two-sided bike path. That was something different. No. That was if they wanted. No, to no, be, no, no. The plans that are up here tonight <laughs> have been submitted. Oh, okay. On behalf of the town, several okay. months ago. Okay, but okay. I think you said it in relation to removing. The well, I think any I mean, plan. Okay, we, we started at Wood Bye. Street, and we never really got to leave Wood Street and talk about the whole project. I'm yeah. coming back to Wood Street no, too. No, no, and, and I know you are, and I'm okay. not getting away. From that. Before just, we go into that, I'm just so, trying to get to the to yeah. a level so I can answer that yeah. question. Okay, and answer say, the question. So, yeah. you know, it. I don't want to look at it in, in, in. You need to look at it obviously in segments because people have specific. Uh, questions and concerns about various segments, but the overall um, picture, the overall improvement that was, you know, that the town wanted to pursue, and the t and with you know state and federal funding is that complete streets formats. We have to accommodate all the users. And when we looked at the separated bike lane, as pro you know, as kind of initially proposed by the Upper Charles Trails Committee, it was, you know, could we introduce that? And we looked at that through the whole car, the whole length. And we were impacting more parking through major other uh, other you know um, businesses with the separated with with two lanes on one side, and um, I I mean I, ha I don't have all the figures okay. with me tonight because we've you know just because we've kind of gone through that exercise and looked at it, and then the town let's say the selectmen through the the upper Charles Trail Committee said all right we want to pursue. What we what is in the plans, which is the two way separated from essentially Wood Street up to Cedar Street. So that's where we have the two lanes on each on the one side on right. the southerly side, through here with parking on the northerly side. As we approach the intersection, as we approach the intersection, you can see we get to Cedar Grove and we cross over the bikes so that we'll have bikes on be able to have bikes on both sides. And we, we have one lane just as we get through the intersection because of the, the cross section here is very tight with you know buildings right at the back of sidewalk. So there wasn't a lot of room to be able to accommodate that. You can't have parking in the middle of the intersection and the, the bike, you know, the separated bike lanes. And when we get up as we're approaching Walcott, um, we had to, you know, maintain the parking that we were maintaining and having the two separated. Um, bike I, lanes on each side. I think looking at it and doing it 
I think from Walcott to Ash, you're fine because you're looking at the width and the width and in, in, in effect the pavement mm -hmm. from, is going to go down. I think your issue and why it might have been done is you don't have the width from Walcott to Cedar. Yes. And you have to eliminate the bike lane in effect there. The separated bike lane had to, to make it work. So I think that's the reason. It's not the wall cut on. No, no. It, as I said, we looked at the whole thing. Right. So your issue is wall squeezed, cut to got cedar. squeezed at the intersection, and then it's this stretch through here. We couldn't have them separated. And okay. Then they're even on road through here because it's very, very tight. Okay. Obviously we have so that's the, the problem pharmacy. block that's causing the right. switch. Okay. <laughs> Can I just make one more comment? Uh, just. I'd recommend this be reevaluated and, and with the intent of ensuring some kind of continuity, whether it be one lane on both sides or two lanes on, on one side. I just don't think it's going to get any use. And I think that as it stands, it's so confusing. I don't know if this has to go to town meeting. I'm assuming it does. But I mean, we're all having a hard time understanding it here. I can't imagine what this would be like at, at town meeting. Um, and just one last question. Did, so you said this was submitted a, a couple of months ago. Yes. But is, was that before the public input sessions? Mm -hmm. It was before the, the public input session we had in September. Okay. All right. I mean, it just makes me wonder why we're doing public input sessions if it's already been submitted and now it's a lot well, harder I mean, to, to we've change. We've had more than just the last one. Okay. There, there, was, there was many before the submission to, well, I know to that. the last one. So. Yeah. And, and, but the you major know, ones have been recent. not advocating that the, that there's a change, but you know, to give an indication on what the DOT process is, that there is there are significant milestones at 25 percent, 75 percent, and 100 percent. And you know, we went through that first stage. Uh, the town went through the first stage of design, had a, an alternative that was submitted and that DOT commented on, and didn't have all the fact, you know, didn't have all the elements as part of that initial design to incorporate. You know, to, were incorporated in that original design. And they, you know, submitted, returned it back, and said, you know, you need to make tweaks at a couple locations. When, when VHB was brought on board, after, you know, asked to kind of look at these tweaks, there was a changeover in the Ownership. property at the at the supermarket. There was a consideration for using because Upper Charles Trail Committee came forward and said we'd like you to explore separated bike lanes. And then there was also consideration for utility upgrades and underground utilities from you know within the within certain portions of the project limits so when we went back to DOT with our um, next submission in the you know in the in the spring of, uh, of 17 it was um, I you know it addressed those things that they had identified that we needed to be looked at more closely it was a change to include the separated bike lanes to realign the intersections at, at Cedar and Grove, and then also to accommodate all users carry carry this thing forward, and then as part of the design incorporating underground utilities through a portion of the project. Okay. So those were the things. So, so that gets us through what we call 25 percent. We had public forums, open yeah. meetings, and then uh, just so I can I can kind of wrap up the process. DOT is still MassDOT is still going to have a design public hearing, you know, in the in the next month. Right. which they're going to essentially take the plans that I presented in September and do a little bit more formalized presentation. The design hasn't changed, but they do a stenographer, they take notes, they make sure that the community and the issues that had been identified have been well thought and there may be some tweaking, et cetera, but then they'll give us approval okay. after that public hearing to go to the 75% design stage. When we go to that phase, some of the more intricate calculations are done. You don't want to do calculations if we're going to start moving the curb right. line. So we'll go to that next level okay. of design, make that submittal, and then go 100% level design, and and then the town will Execute. be able to secure okay. any temporary easements that are needed. So I mean, I've got, a, okay, I'm gonna have to. I want to have. Do you need, um, Dale Danahy, 25 East Main Street. I've been to all these meetings except for the September one because I saw the date was incorrect, so I missed that. But I was also on the Downtown Revitalization Committee that started all this for several years. And I don't feel that 
the public is ever listened to. Um, we go to meetings, we complain, and yet the, the plans still seem to reflect more of what the DOT wants than what the general public of Hopkinton sometimes wants. Um, as a downtown business owner on that corner, um, I was the previous owner that said no to no more taking of my property to line up that intersection. Um, and I see now that it, it's part of the plan. But when I pushed back, um, it came off the table. So I, I feel that you can push back with DOT and things can change, but nobody listens. So that um, the pushback, I don't know if it's not brought to DOT or just um, I'm, I'm kind of frustrated with the, with the project. Um, as far as parking and bike lanes, I'm concerned about how many parking spaces have been given up for the bike lane. Can somebody tell me how many downtown parking spaces are going to be eliminated in order for people to ride their bikes downtown? I can look that up for you. I have the numbers right here. Oh, excuse me. I already had it up. Well, I can't tell you how many parking spaces were eliminated for bike lanes. I can tell you how many parking spaces are within Main Street, what's being impacted, and what's, gonna, and what's being replaced. So uh, there are 98 parking spaces uh, along Main Street now. There are 82 going back in. However, we've had it in other parking along Grove Street at the police station. And um, what's our other location, Dave? That behind St. John's. And behind St. John that have been added back in. Walcott um, Street. In Walcott Street, it's the last one. Um, so they had, you know, there were impacts to the project uh, or to the parking along the project from, from 98 to 82, and then we've added back in uh, 16 or 18 spaces back in to get us to try and get to a net neutral. But the town is continuing to uh, pursue, you know, off, off street. Um, and off-site parking within just the within the on. town. Just a follow-up. Okay. Where's the parking? Additional parking on Grove Street going to be? The parking on Grove Street along this show, along here, at at the police station, and then along okay. Walcott, we've added back in added in here. So just to be clear, there's currently no parking on Grove Street, but going to add spots to it. Yes. Mm -hmm. One, right? Four spots Four along spots. Grove Street. Okay. So through, through the chair, just on on that point, uh, the parking at St. John's is temporary until we can f figure out a longer term solution so please don't count that sixteen thousand dollars a year parking situation as any long term answer mm -hmm. well my question is if you eliminate parking say in front of um, a business um, I believe in front of wards it, will they still have parking in front of their business uh, which is uh, next to the fire station next to the fire station up here yeah. Um, we don't have any additional parking on the southerly side. On the northerly side, we've, uh, you know, added back in the spaces that were impacted there. Correct. So, if there's, are there any spaces in front of on the southerly side? Are there any spaces in front of Ward's Barbershop? No. Okay. So you expect his customers to walk across the street from the police station. That's how you made it made him whole. Phipps is another um, in, in the insurance company. You've eliminated mm -hmm. their parking. So his customers, again, are supposed to park at the police station, the elderly walk up the street, and that's your answer to how we've given back some of the parking spaces that we've eliminated. It doesn't work. Um, we've just opened up the library. We see that there's a big influx of people coming to the center of town to go to the library. We know we don't have enough parking spaces for the library, and, we, and yet we're still eliminating parking spaces. And I, I have a problem with that. I feel that you're sacrificing the businesses to move traffic or to move people through Main Street, but if there's nothing to stop for, they can just keep on going through Main Street. You've accommodated bicyclists, that's great, but there's gonna be nothing for them to come down to Main Street for if you don't have enough parking in front of the businesses. Not across the street, not up the street, not down the street, in front of the businesses. And frankly, I'm glad I'm not in business there anymore because You've done, you're doing a number on the businesses on Main Street with your lack of parking and eliminating parking. And I've been saying that since day <coughs> one, and uh, they're all gone. Mm -hmm. oh. And through the chair, can I ask? Can I ask a well, wait, before you go, I think Fran. Well, there's a there's a point that no. wasn't enumerated fully. I, I don't have the numbers of spaces that he was speaking about on Grove, the police, and Walcott. Four on Grove, right? Mm-hmm. Grove, six at the police station. Six. Six on Walcott. Six on Walcott. Thank you. Okay, Bob. Before you go, Fran. 
Yeah, yeah, just I'm back on the Wood Street intersection. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Um, and he thought it was going to be a short read. I did. <laughs> I did. So, Gary, you might help me out on this one as well. If you're a bicyclist coming up Wood Street, turning on, right now, typically when you do this, and I do a little biking, you know, we're close to you, but I get to the top of the hill, I'm usually gassed because it's uphill. And I'm just waiting for that green light because I'm trying to go with traffic. And when somebody's trying to make that right-hand turn lane, I've got to be a little pretty cautious. Has there been any thought or consideration of putting a crosswalk, um, probably a little bit more on the west side there, uh, where Wood Street connects with uh, Main Street, so that those people on a, on a bicycle wouldn't have to necessarily first go left and then go right, but could cross and then jump on that bike lane that you have on the south side of um, of Main Street. It the you know there was yeah. the, you were talking on the west side right there um, land takings from property owners something that the, the town is trying to minimize as much as they can trying to put ADA accessible ramps on each of those locations was going to require land takings and we're providing that connection to the separated bike lane uh, under signal control with pedestrian control and our bikers are going to uh, typically they're not going to follow that. They're just going to okay. find a way to go and yep. and cut over. Okay. And so, so, speaking as a cyclist, <coughs> what I like to do when I'm riding is I want to go straight. Okay. So, any of these crossovers doesn't simply won't work. And I think the the, the question, of, and I, I like the idea of having bike lanes in town, but I think the question we have to ask is who are we really accommodating? Because you're not going to be accommodating me or Gary. Because we're going to blow by on, our, on the curb um, or on the side of the road. And how many people are really coming downtown to ride their bikes is, I think, a fundamental question that, that I, <coughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I just, I just want to put that question out. And then there's like just a small section where we have these lanes. It, it, it seems to me that we want something a little simpler. Mm -hmm. or that, can you just touch on the requirement? Because isn't it a, a requirement that we put in the bike lanes in order to get the funding? funding? Yeah, yes. I mean, as right. basic that's, as it gets, it's part of it. bike lanes have to be part of the project. What, is, what are, the, what are the requirements for MassDOT with the, uh, the complete streets? What are the requirements? Yeah, I, I mean, there's several different options for bike lanes. Um, <laughs> we've, I think we've actually incorporated all of them into these plans one at one time or another. But bike lanes is one of them. I'm talking not necessarily the well, specific. Yeah, bike lanes, uh, ADA improvements, uh, okay. uh, sidewalks, uh, signals, uh, signage. The, 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 com the complete streets layout need to accommodate all users. Okay. So, yes. so sidewalks on both sides, yeah. bike lanes or bike accommodating shoulders on yeah. both sides. Uh, or if some alternative that will accommodate bikes in both directions within the right of way, within the town's right of way, okay. and then vehicles. And okay. any, any pedestrian, any sidewalk combination, we need to have fully accessible ADA ramps, any signals have to be fully accessible for yeah. you know, pedestrians and bikes. Yeah. Okay. okay, we'll go Cliff and then Robert. <coughs> Thank you. All right, so there's an old statement that I learned from Field of Dreams a long time ago, build it and they will come. So to Gary's point about the estimated usage of the town, we don't know that yet, um, but we will. <laughs> We're going to find out. It will increase. It will increase. Mm -hmm. um, so build it and they will come. We'll determine the numbers, but I, I still think we're convoluted with the, with the crossings of the road as we, as we travel through this. I know it's a mandated thing that we have to have the bike lanes in order to get the, gov uh, the, the, the funding through the state. Um, I look back at, at this intersection on Wood Street and I'm still at a loss for, you're using the analogy of coming out of, um, what's the street? Meserve. Yeah, Meserve, thank Meserve. you. I'm having a brain fart here. Uh, so. People coming out of Missouri are, are supposed to cut out through traffic to get into that middle lane because your analogy was that anybody coming out of Missouri would use that middle lane to go straight. 
because we're at a traffic signal, yep. we're providing a storage lane. I understand that. For bikes. I understand that. But and my I'm question that with bikes on the separated southerly side, the only area would be the experienced bicyclist along Main, West Main Street and anyone coming out of Missouri that may get into this lane. Okay, don't you think that that, that statement right there, coming out of Missouri to get into that lane, with people that are going to take a right-hand turn, don't you find that to be hmm, dangerous? That's a, to say the least. Just to say the least. Any, any bicycle move on a roadway mm -hmm. has to, you know, it's, it's like crossing the street. You have to look both ways. You, ways. You I've been to, hit. No, no, I, I understand. <laughs> and and I'm, I'm not minimizing. I'm not trying to downplay sure. that at all. All I'm saying is that um, the right turn lane into Wood Street is currently a very heavy movement. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's not going away. Right. There were a few comments about, you know, it used to be kind of, more like a, a veer off so you could take it at a higher rate of speed yep. we're trying to control that and reduce I liked the it. speed and just saying you like that i like it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so so anyone coming out of reserve that that has to get into the lane, if anyone's coming out of reserve and wants to get in in a vehicle yeah. that wants to get out into that lane though. is going to look is, to their left before they pull out into that lane as well there's a, a bike box currently painted in front of reserve street so that people when they're queued up at the traffic light don't block the opening at Reserve Street. So that's being utilized. Just to, put back in. Just to a point on that, I'm I'm actually glad to see that it's shortened there and you mentioned that early because that longer crosswalk and that quicker right. I'm I'm being facetious yeah, I understand. over here. Um, people are not expecting people to cross and that, that does add emphasis to the fact that that is a pedestrian way and people have to be it, it, I can see that that makes it much safer for walkers in particular agreed it, it, there's a there's a balance as, as traffic and highway engineers that we have to strike <coughs> on every single project and I understand that there are experienced cyclists there are you know the handicapped community that are using utilizing the sidewalks utilizing the bike lanes etc that we need to strike a balance what we can accommodate safely for all users and which may inconvenience some users as well so tightening up this intersection reduces the crossing distance which is we're trying to make it safer for pedestrians and the handicap we're trying to accommodate um, a bike lane in in that area so that when there is a red light there and we know there's vehicles making that right turn on a, on a green arrow because of because of the high volume of those movements, we're trying to provide a safe lane for the bicyclist and a safe lane for the motorist. And as I said, it, it's a bit of a balance. Okay. So we've I'm going to, because we're spending an hour per intersection, so unless you <laughs> want to be here, I think. So let me, well, the top, let Dave me turn. Just say yeah. first. John, I just have one comment on the, um, the, the one, one lane, bike, one way bike lane on each side. When we first looked at that at this intersection, that would have required a, a, a signal yes. at Claflin Street. So for anybody coming off, and again, longer term, the town is trying to tie in all the bike lanes and the Milford bike lane to this area, as well as continuing through the project through Center School and tying it into other regional bike lanes. So it's not just this, this one two-way bike lane section. Um, so again, it's a balance. We put a signal there. You, you, it's the one like when, when you go to Milford, the 85. There would be a signal there. Anytime you had a pedestrian or a bike that would want to cross coming out of the center trail, it, mm -hmm. it, everybody would stop. Well, and, and the impact that would have to, you know, the priority of you know trying to balance improving traffic through the corridor as well at the peak times. Um, again, it's a balance of, of all these things. So. Um, if, you, if I may throw the chair, I, there's so many different points. It may take an hour for each intersection, and because that's how many questions there are about it. And we're an elected board. The board of selection is an elected board, uh, but the town meeting, as far as people in the town, they don't know a lot of these details. We're all volunteers. I didn't know a lot of these details until even some today when you said that it's been submitted to the state. I, I know I understand the 25% plan and all that, but we can ask for and changes can be made I'm kind of looking at you Dave uh, that's not it's not a bad thing if a project takes a little bit longer to plan it the right way to fit the town's needs uh, as as the board see it as the citizens are giving us feedback 
uh, that's not a bad thing if it, if it takes longer, if it's done right. And, and that's, what we're, that's what we're aiming for. Um, what you're saying just right now about Claflin Street and having it be a signal for people coming off the center trail, which is connecting eventually with Milford, Dave, is one of the things that we need to do is uh, have some place where they can cross. And we, the Pleasant Street intersection is not looked at at all in this plan, and it, that could be coordinated. This red light at Wood Street is a major tie-up in, in town right now, every day. There's people that are inconvenienced for many more minutes than it should be. And it's a statewide problem with coordinating red lights. Um, and to give some context to what we understood as a board and as a town and, and, and voters, as what Mur Muriel was saying is that we have technology in our intersection right now on Main Street and Cedar and Grove that supposedly has the radar to detect how many traffic, how many cars are backed up. This is what we were told. And I, I assumed it wasn't configured yet and it hasn't been running the way it's going to run when it's all done. But uh, I really do want to hear what these guys have to say, uh, and they've been waiting so patiently. But that's just a little bit of feedback out of a number of things. Okay. Robert? No, I wasn't finished, but that's okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you, Cliff. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is this on? No, yes. Robert, so introduce Robert yourself. Here. I have a, a business at 81 Main, previously at 24 Main for 24 years. And so I'm pretty familiar with traffic downtown and the parking and the businesses. And uh, I just want to mention one thing. There's a couple businesses you all, uh, as different people, allowed in the downtown but with very limited floor space. I think you allowed them to call one parking space their own, but you allowed each of them to have 17 seats. So I think that's a little bit generous, and I think that contributes to a parking problem in the downtown. Um, but getting back to Claflin, actually, uh, Frank, I believe it's Claflin Place mm -hmm. that you're talking about, not Claflin Street, because there is a Claflin right. Street. There's like three, and four. There's Claflin one. Ave. So um, to eliminate yeah. that, it, John, did you say you were limiting the crosswalk? At the respite center. At the respite center. That's, yes. That's, that's unconscionable. Uh, there are people mm -hmm. uh, that use that center, that visit that center, that, are, uh, that have physical uh, and uh, intellectual uh, liabilities. And the ones with the physical often park on the other side of that mm -hmm. crosswalk, mm -hmm. on Claflin Place. That's right. There's a parking lot for uh, the respite owner. Mm -hmm. The respite yeah. center owns it. Yep. And there's a lot of traffic. I got struck from behind uh, as I stopped for a person uh, in that crosswalk. So I think uh, I think that uh, she might have struck a person uh, instead of me if I hadn't been there. So that, that crosswalk needs to go back. Uh, that's a very important crosswalk for the safety of the people that use that building, for the safety of the people who park in that parking lot, really is, folks. I, mm -hmm. I hope. I agree. I hope you all can get on board with no, that. I totally because, agree. Yeah. Uh, this is just a wrong. This yeah. is one of the worst pieces <coughs> of this plan. Thank you. Oh, I have other things to say. Gary's chomping at the I promise. Last time, Gary Trendle put me on Chamberlain Street. Um, just for the record, in my ten and a half years living here, every time I've gone downtown, I've been able to find a parking spot. So um, I, I realize there's a lot of sensitivity to it. Personally, you know, for an elderly person, maybe it matters to park right in front of the business, but it, it's a downtown location. And, and you look at any other downtown community, I don't think there's an expectation to park right in front of the store. Um, but going back to the, the bike lanes, uh, I think there's another option as well that, that may be worth considering. And a lot of towns, I don't remember what it's called, but they actually designate the vehicle travel lane. Uh, they actually allow the bikes to take up the whole lane. And I realize that the vehicles don't always like that, but if you were to do that, especially on a downhill where those bicycles are going to be moving close to the speed limit, then I think that alleviates the need for a separate bike lane. So in those downtown, uh, in, the, in the downhill sections, that might be an option to preserve some parking spots and, and, and also meet the standards that, that the state requires. Thank you. Uh, through the chair? Can, can no, I I want, yeah. Any back? Well, I want to. He, he wants to. Want. Okay. Yeah, I'll just respond again. The, the one iteration before this area, we, we had the Sharrows on the street. Um, Sharrows up there, yeah. Um, in, in the feedback that we got from the community and from boards and ultimately the um, upper child's community, 
nobody liked them. <laughs> they didn't think they were safe having the bikes between the, the cars and, and so you know the upper trail uh, upper Charles worked with um, I think it was the Conway group. Yeah, Conway group. And, and, and they, they worked with them and, and they, they came up with the, the separated bike lanes. As well as at the same time the state and the feds were putting together um, kind of formal guidelines for those designs. Is that correct? Yeah, but, but just one thing, though, the, the recommendations for the separated bike lanes. I'm just going to point out that you lied through your teeth <laughs> when you said one more time, I promise. <laughs> 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 well, I appreciate Go ahead. The, the, the separated two-lane bike lane, I mean, that, that, that's, that's assuming that you've got that in the full stretch. As soon as you split it up, it all, to me, it all goes off the window. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. I, I realize that's, you know, the, the guidance from our Paul Charles Trail Committee was we like two-lane bike paths that are separated because that is the safest option and, right. and it's a good way to encourage people to use it. But if you've got to cross the street two times <laughs> to go half a mile, no one's going to use it and it, and it's, it's, it just defeats the purpose of it. So. If I can, to tie into that, can you walk me through how timing, etc. So if you're biking west and you get to Cedar Street, and you cross Cedar Street, what's your timing to now cross to the south side to get into the two bike lane? Because I think part of it is bikers might know to do that, but I don't think traffic who is coming from Ashland to Upton is going to say there's a bike lane, I gotta watch out for bikes crossing the street. So you're in a bike, the light turns green, you cross Cedar Street. How, what do you, what's your timing to now cross Main Street to get to the south? When you say timing, you're talking about the, the green time for the bicyclist? In other words, are... On the traffic signal? Yeah, so they're supposed to follow the north-south traffic signal. Yes. So they're going to go to the bike lane and they're going to cut across as traffic is going north-south and turning from Cedar on to Maine. Right. We, we haven't designed the timing for any of the intersections yet. When I, you know, when I said at 25%, 75%, and 100%. Right. Because of tweaks in curb line and introduction of pedestrian crossings and stuff, I would have to do a thousand calculations on the timing because we, we moved it a foot. We change it a foot, so right. that stuff is done when the alignment is finalized after the public hearing. I, I have but an they, answer for you, John. They that. would turn with the green light. They would turn with the, the green light. The bike, yeah, okay. the bikes would be the bikes would be part of the the green. There are indications in the uh, in the bike lanes for you know for the bikes to trip trigger the green. Yeah. There be symbols on the on the pavement. So how? What have, from your experience, and I'm, I'm not arguing yesterday. No, no, but, I understand. But how do we let car drivers know to expect that? Because my concern is cars going north and south on Cedar who aren't from the community aren't going to expect a bicyclist to cross completely across and turn. Well, there, there are bike, there are bike signal indications you know with you know f the, su the signals for the bikes only uh, and stuff like that but so we typically it would be a bike only might indicator be a bike only if there is a bike okay it, it might be a bike only there's a couple options but we have we we, we haven't got to that okay. stage of but it's something we'll, we're, we're looking to where it is being introduced in other parts of the country to, to be able to do it here mr. chair so, point, so of, chair, point, chair, of, point of order please yeah. just what's the process we've spent over an hour talking about bikes. Is there going to be time at the end to talk about non-bike lanes? Well, that's why I wanted to move on to another we, uh, we have a range we of can't, We can't be remiss in, in the questioning that we're having right now right. with regards to does this facilitate the public safety and the usage as it, as it deems? I think the point on the bike lane and the concern has been stated. I think, I, I think that we can go on record as saying continuity in particular is Correct. a concern for us. And we don't necessarily want um, a design that looks good on paper, that it, but in practicality won't be utilized by right. the people who are biking on Main Street. Very well put. If, if I could answer your question, yeah. not to the, to the chair, to the chair. Uh, right now, <coughs> without the se separate signaling, uh, the law is 
people cannot cross into the street unless it's a crosswalk. They cannot cross the white line on the side of the gutter because that's jaywalking unless they're in a, a parking space. Uh, if there's uh, a bike right now, they have to get off their bike and walk it through a, cro uh, a crosswalk. A bicycle cannot be driven through a crosswalk, as the law is right now. Now, if we get special signaling, uh, th then the there'll be a gr what I've seen is a, like a you know people cross as a, a dot with the uh, arms and legs. Well, for bikes cross is a you know two triangles and a dot and you know for right. the head. Yeah, there's a bike and, uh, bike indication on the signal. So it's just for that lane and. People can't walk, or cars can't go, and, and then the timing just has to work out. So it's not really a timing issue; it's a uh, organizational issue. So um, overall, uh, I really wanted to ask Gary a question, but uh, I think if um, I've driven through Cambridge a lot, and they're very bike savvy town, um, and they a lot of their major streets just have the painted lanes on the side, and if there's a bike there, you can't really pass them and you just roll up the next light and you pass them at the light when the light changes. Um, and they have to stop at the light or get off their bikes and cross yep. in the crosswalk. And mostly they'll zip through anyways, but um, to the point that Gary and our family were saying earlier. Um, so I really would like to see painted bike lanes, no other construction type of ideas going on on this whole project from side to side, because it seems to be trying to solve a problem that doesn't exist. We need bike lanes, paint bike lanes. Uh, we need parking spaces, keep the parking spaces we have and add more, great. But uh, I think we're maybe over overdoing it a bit, um, a lot from want to make it more complex than it should be. And if we just have the bike lanes as they are and people follow the law as it stands, we don't need the extra money to spend for extra signaling for lights and, and all that extra timing that's an entailed is part of the traffic control. Okay. Muriel? I have a couple of questions um, about some of the parking space. It's more of a statement because um, I don't want to belabor the whole length of the project. Um, but it's come to my attention that um, some of the businesses are not uh, handicapped accessible unless they have a bike, unless they have a handicapped parking space on the street. So I want to make sure that that detail is accounted for in the process. Um, I'm very glad that each of the intersections include ADA improvements because the intersections mm -hmm. as they stand mm -hmm. are really frightening to watch people try and navigate mm -hmm. who have um, mobility issues. Um, I would like to understand, is the undergrounding of the, um, the utilities. utilities in any way a requirement of Mass DOT or is that something you were asked to do just because from the town? That's not a requirement. That's I a didn't town, think so. Okay, and that's a request. as far as I know, that's a huge piece of the expense. You, is there any breakdown on that? The estimate for the undergrounding right now, as is, was about five five million dollars. And the whole project you're talking about is eight. Is about eight and a half. Mm -hmm. So of that five million, the town already had had host community agreements with a few developers. So there's, you know, the town was the town was actually told Dave by town meeting voters not to do it. To be honest with you. So I don't know who ended but up changing. No, don't interrupt me, please. Um, so I, I I understand that you guys are being are doing what you were asked to do. So I have no I have no objection to that at all. Um, I wonder if you could help us understand, in general, for the eight million dollars, the traffic improvements. What is the percentage? What is the improvement we're getting and targeting with? Uh, straightening, not not straightening, but improving that. That I know, I understand that that intersection at Cedar and Grove and Main is the is the big bugaboo intersection, um, and we're not able to straighten it, but we are able to make it a little more straight. Mm -hmm. um, for the Excuse entire me, Gloria, cost one second. of the one second, but if we if you want to carry on a side conversation, can you do it outside because right. it's disrupting um, the meeting? Thank you. So right. I'm just wondering if there, and it, I understand if you don't have the numbers now, but I think that this is an important piece to mm -hmm. be able to present to the voters, is what exactly are we getting for uh, $8 million of the state's money um, and in, in regards to actually data-driven improvements in time? Do you, do you understand? It, it, it's... Just the way you asked, it's a I, I, I know. I'm, I'm sorry. No. We, <laughs> it's, 
we were going to start at the beginning, run through the whole project, and then and we I don't, I don't you have, badly. I don't have specific costs for each individual piece. No, right? yes. Right. But what the state and the federal government is funding is the intersection, with, is Main Street from the intersection of Wood Street, reconstructing the roadway, new sidewalks, the separated bike lanes, the traffic signals at Wood Street, the traffic signal in realignment at Cedar and Grove, and the bike lane sidewalks and work up through Hayden Row and Ash Street. And okay. all new roadway, all new sidewalks, both sides, that whole length is what the state and the federal <coughs> government is paying for. Okay. Which includes drain new drainage upgrades to the drainage system. Um, and uh, all ADA compliant, all new traffic signal equipment, stuff like that. The items that that get very close to the eight million dollars. Okay. As part of that eight million, there's some uh, traffic police for during construction where we need to have police control, um, and you know we're alternating traffic in some location, et cetera. But essentially, it's rebuilding all of Maine from Wood Street through Ash Street. Sidewalks both sides, redoing the intersections, all new traffic signal equipment. Uh, that's essentially gets very close to the eight million dollars. Okay, so you were directed to uh, increase the size of Town Common as well. Well, this was um, I may defer to Dave on the specifics. We looked at five alternatives for Marathon Way. Yeah. And to maximize parking, to keep Marathon Way open, to have parking on both sides of Marathon Way. It's a, there were a couple different variations. I didn't bring all five alternatives mm -hmm. with me yeah. tonight. Um, when initially, when we met, when the town met with the Historic District Commission, there was some discussion of improving uh, and expanding on the Doughboy Island and how could we enhance the comments. So there was some discussion about possibly, you know, in, you know, bringing the comment out and having parking along Main Street, but trying to enhance this area. And that's the alternative that the selectmen kind of in the board, in the uh, Chamber of Commerce endorsed and said, that's the concept that we want you to bring forward. So that's new though, from, from this, September. This is new, no, this no. is what I proposed, in, this is what I show, showed in September. Okay, so I, I didn't. I guess I, I thought all of the, um, the options were still in play. I didn't know that that had been finalized. This um, was finalized probably back in April. So, like to, that. if I may, to Muriel's point and inject through the chair, why didn't we, if you're going to extend the, the common, why didn't you give it enough room to angle? You can get more parking spaces on an angle than you can on a, on a horizontal. Why wouldn't you, on the right side or the south side of Main Street, have the traffic turn in and use more of the common green space for vehicles to point inward and back out as opposed to just leaving well, how many eight spaces nine space nine existing spaces there yes we did as i said five alternatives and i apologize i i, w I thought we were kind of going to do a little bit condensed presentation on what we did in September okay so I it's I okay bring, it's, I didn't you're bring doing everything. great you're doing no, great I didn't I didn't bring any a lot of the alternatives that had been you know kind of decided several months ago but we looked at five alternatives we yep. looked at alternatives to as I said to keep Marathon Way open have parallel parking on both sides along the Doughboy Island and along Marathon Way then we looked at an alternative with angled parking in Marathon Way as well and we looked at what we could do to maximize and it was based based on input that was provided to us from the selectmen, the Chamber of Commerce that, you know, uh, I, and my belief was the Historic District Commission had also weighed in, <coughs> if we could enhance this and expand on the common, then Great. it should be explored. Then that's, that's the alternative that we prepared, the selectmen endorsed it, and it was part of the design plan. And I agree with that. But now I say to you, I ask you, how many more feet would we lose on green space if we were to go and angle them in and get 14 spaces instead of nine spaces into that that area and, and I'm it's a doughboy like you say right okay mm -hmm. so so I see it as as dead space it's just dead space marathon way yes because it 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 it's our starting point to the marathon 
so why couldn't we expound on the parking area <coughs> and go in on the angle add more spaces but you're only taking up a few more feet of that greenery What's that? well the the other you know I'll, I'll say that we did a couple different alternatives we did include an angled parking when you have angled parking you back up into a public way you need to have a two foot scored concrete separation or, or cobble separation or something so that you're not backing into having enough room to park and then back into a parking lane so you can move it so you're not backing out into the public way it actually takes more space you know and and you know when you just think of it as oh if this was angled I could just pull her in and I could back out and go it, it needs to be separated from the, the traffic that is driving on Main Street so it does take up more space by having angled parking plus the separation plus the the parking the, the lane. distance for the back out right yeah. right back out so you're not within the public within way. the way right so, so, so as I said we did look at a couple alternatives on that and this was the one that was at least endorsed by the selectmen and the chamber to, to push forward okay. the other piece yeah. is it just just to the common the doughboy is part of the National Historic District so impacts to that when we're using state and federal funds rise to a much higher level we have to do a section 106 filing when we're Amy. dealing with Amy federal Amy funds we have to do a section um, okay. 254 filing on state regulated historic properties and um, impacts to that are, are to put it mildly frowned upon very strongly so I don't go in and propose impacts to historic district unless there's some overwhelming public benefit to that impact because gotcha. it just doesn't get endorsed in the okay, historic I'm district. Gonna, okay, just because we want to get all the questions in, Muriel. Do you I, I just want to make sure I answer the question. Did, yeah, you. And then I, Amy. I just want to make sure um, that it doesn't get lost whether you have the answer tonight or not. That we have a quantifiable improvement, measurable improvement that we can contemplate in terms of the dollars we're spending. Um, for this project um, and I also want to understand am I under, to understand then that the undergrounding is an additional expense Undergrounding is not part of that eight, eight million dollars and how much is that now uh, estimated at do we know it, it right about now the estimate was five, five and a half million. so we're really talking about a 13 million dollar project if this goes forward the way that we would like to is, is there anything else we're not talking about as uh, an additional cost to this project because I have I, I've been paying attention and I went to the September forum and nobody told the public there that we were talking about eight million dollars plus five million dollars well the, the only thing uh, would and, and just so I can separate that we're, we're trying because DOT is is in partnership with the town as a proponent we're, we've been focusing on the oh, tip and the DOT yeah. portion of that yeah and I understand because, that. because the undergrounding is part of but separate the Part town needs the to pursue okay. that the town needs to come up with okay. the funds for that and they're doing that separately it will be incorporated such that we can get that work done at, at the, the same, same time, time so that way we're not torn up. but but we're really focusing on because DOT is is kind of a key partner and we're, we're trying to keep separate a few things because as you know from attending uh, the forum yeah. in September there were there were some very strong opinions and on several different factors and uh, we're just trying to keep it isolated to the, the items that are kind of part of the discussion. So do we have a quantifiable improvement that we're getting? In traffic. Quantifiable in tra improvement in, in, in traffic flow. operations yes. and safety, yes. And what is it what is that? We have reduced we have reduced congestion. By how much? I, I, I have to I have to look up some okay. of that stuff. That's okay. the kind of thing and, that we and, no, really I, I understand, but I, I think the other piece is um, a safer roadway that accommodates all the users. Many of the users that are not currently <coughs> using the roadway pedestrians handicap accessibility uh, you know just the improvements at Wood Street are going to reduce congestion and operation there uh, as um, I'm gonna need so it said there's you know the, yep. there's and congestion I, I, there every day and just by separating those lanes as best you can to to facilitate a left turn and the through movement we're gonna be able to get more efficiency you can be able to yep. reduce that. I need to know the the, the greater detail for yep. for eight million dollars I need to know exactly what we're buying in in terms of improvement and traffic flow mm -hmm. um, and just to reiterate um, mr. Palsioni's point and the rest of us too, um, that crosswalk at at or near the respite center 
is a key piece. No, of I, safety I wrote. I did. I wrote that down, yeah. and I'm, I'm going to relook at it and see what the reason was. Typically, crosswalks that are not it signalized locations. We want to make sure again they're safe. Uh, I just want to look at it and see if there's any rationale or reason mm -hmm. there that 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 needed to be eliminated. So, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll follow-up question, to Muriel. Um, that eight million. Are we paying that eight million? I thought the state was paying. Well, so I don't state. know if you know this, but your tax dollars <laughs> go to the state. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Well, so, no, I just wanted. Yes, I just wanted yes. to know what you were asking. Okay. Yes. Hey, me. Yes. Okay. Well, I was lost my train of thought here. Um, <laughs> so many things to say, but uh, so when the very beginning, you mentioned that traffic studies had been done at the beginning. I really think those should be posted to the town website, and I think we would love to see those too, because people. What with, was the name, John? I think at the, at the beginning, John recommend or mentioned that. A traffic study was done prior to the, the prior to the twenty five percent design, and if those could just be on the town website so people could see, that, I think that'd be very helpful. And other, also, I just think there really yeah. has to be a lot more publicity on this project, like that more public forums so where people can come speak, you know, say what they want to say, and we don't want surprises at town meetings. We want all the questions out, all the concerns, and I don't know, just as much publicity as you can do in more forums. I think would be helpful. Um, Let's see, so the angle parking on the common, I just wanted to mention, the historic district did meet with VHB um, before Thanksgiving, and so we did get ask a lot of questions, got some answers. And one of the main reasons we originally did not um, like the other parking alternatives is they all took away several feet from the common. Uh, so that, that was our main concern, where we'd rather have it expanded than taken away from. But, you know, we are, we are flexible. I know a lot of people have brought concerns to the historic district about losing Marathon Way. The Marathon uses it for wheelchair, the wheelchair division uses the Marathon Way. Um, the Upper Charles Trail would like a bike lane. So we heard all these other concerns, and we are flexible to other design options. You know, if, if uh, different design options come forward later. But just wanted to explain that a little bit more. Um, oh, and the last thing, Meserve Street. I know at the Planning Board uh, public hearing on the master plan back in the spring, a resident of Meserve Street spoke at length about uh, the crosswalk at Meserve Street and waiting at the bus stop that it's very unsafe there. So I just want to make sure that that is improved with any improvement. So I don't know how many cars, a lot of cars queue trying to get, um, approaching the Wood Street intersection there. And when cars queue and then they get annoyed that they can't go right because they, they have a green arrow, then I guess they go over the curb and the kids are waiting for the bus at the same time. Over so, the curb? Huh? Over the curb? Yeah. Well, there's but not a sharp curb at the But that could be They're improved. Visiting the yeah. Yeah, but that can I be improved with street furniture. <laughs> I didn't say you did. I said they come. They need to get there so quickly. Yeah. <laughs> so I think follow that, up? Or, yeah, go ahead. Or I think I'm okay, sorry. Robert. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, through the chair, John, did you say this has been pretty much solidified since April? I think what I said is the common was present. We presented five alternatives to the selectmen in April, and then and, and the and the, the chamber, chamber April and May. And they selected the alternative that expanded on the common. When was that? April and May. I don't. Okay. Ha I'd have All to look right. up so the date. This is my point. You held a presentation at the senior center. You gave a wonderful presentation. Claire Wright, selectman Claire Wright, uh, gave the most uh, eloquent mm -hmm. speech I've ever heard of, uh, from anybody about uh, a monument, and she and she spoke about it. the uh, the uh, doughboy monument and the fact that. She believes that the entire space was designed to go with the doughboy, the tip of the spear, if you recall. And um, and I also had some input, as I have for many, many years. Uh, and now you're saying this was already planned, while people were were, uh, I, were I, 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 don't, I just I don't like to have. What I said was we. The no, town no, asked. No, don't, don't waste the time. No, but I, I just I, I I didn't like the connotation that it, when you say it was already planned, I'm not sure what you mean by that. You said it was already decided that they were going to have that green space. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Of, okay. Can we instead of a, a throughway? Okay. And I think the point is both points have been made, no, no, I, so I'd I rather. I just I wasn't I, like I missed the way you okay. described. That's all. Okay. Oh no, we can talk outside if you want. No, okay. No. Outside the <laughs> field if you want. See. <laughs> um, that is such a waste of space. The common doesn't need to be enlarged. As a matter of fact, you talk about historic district, you don't want to go near it and all that stuff. Well, it's about 10 to 12 feet of what appears to be the common that's under jurisdiction of the selectmen, which I don't believe uh, is part of the historic district. 
Now that could be used also for parking. But to say that you can't, you can't, you can't. Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. You can use that for parking. You can make diagonal parking. Uh, and you can make a, a wide enough road or a lane with, uh, with a um, secondary surface for people to back up into. There's plenty of space there. Plenty. And, and it's a little late, though. OK, I'm Robert, I'm going to cut you off at that because I think the point's been made. And I want to get some new. Just one comment related to that, real quick. I, I think that the gentleman said that the selectmen looked at that and approved that, if I'm not mistaken, that design. They decided on that design. That's so Claire, yeah. Claire would add input to that at that point. Okay. It, okay, I don't want to continue the. I want to get new points out there so we've got everything covered. Sorry, just, I'll try to be brief, but I just want to make sure everyone understands all the other alternatives that kept. The Cap Marathon Way reduced the size or changed the size of the triangle to some in some configuration. I don't know if everyone knows that. And in all of the configurations, the Doughboy and the Cookies Corner Monument and the flagpole all stay in their location. And I, I think there might be some confusion why things once one was more preferable than the other that people may not understand. So, and so a question for you, Mr. Chair. I did want to ask some questions about utilities. I'm willing to wait if we still want to talk more about this. Well, let's. Any I, new a, questions? Maybe on. a question for Amy, or maybe more of a, a statement. I I, I kind of agree with uh, Robert. He's left, but his his opinion and view of it, and he's the guy who pays it a lot of attention, kind of matches my own. I know that Claire was very eloquent and very well stated in her opposition, but I know that she did kind of come around to uh, some various alternatives that Amy was kind of mentioning, perhaps in the future. But I don't know. If I don't know as a citizen, and I certainly don't know as a planner board member, that anything's been set in stone on exactly that plan being approved 100%. Um, and that's, there's some vagueness about it that if, you know, we're here to communicate, so if you know, we understood, I understood it to be different, you know, Robert understood it to be different. Um, and so I understand what he's saying. Okay, before let's. Process moving forward is as it always has been. We presented this plan because we had to get it into mass stock. Sure. There's a 75 percent phase. We go through these meetings, public hearings, get input. We go back to the selectmen, present them with all this input and feedback, and make recommendations one way or another. Mm -hmm. and, and the selectmen ultimately will decide what happens here based on all the feedback we get. We're meeting with the BAA. We're meeting with the Marathon Committee. You know, we've already got input from the historical district commission on okay. all the concerns people have with this particular. But part of my point uh, is, uh, if, if I, I, just, I it's, it's about. Okay. I, I, I want to get substance, and then we can talk about procedure because that's it's a, a procedure. procedure. So you have some questions on utilities. utilities. So. Um, you mentioned earlier in the meeting that later on there was some, I know originally that the undergrounding was from to, up to Summer Street, I think, from Ash to Summer Street. Or originally it was the entire length of the project. Correct. Um, it was cut down to about the public safety to okay. Ash Street. My, my concern is that for the section that's not going to be underground, that we're building a lot of sidewalks and bike paths and curbing and stuff. And if we decide to do that undergrounding at that point, we're going to have to tear it all up to get the utilities underground. So I don't know if anybody's talked about that at all. The undergrounding at a future date? Yes. The, you know, yes. So. Yeah, I'm not sure that, that, would, that would happen. You know, once. Well, once what the, project, the reason. The project I know. So yeah, but I know some people don't agree with the expense on the undergrounding, but the, the whole idea of the undergrounding is to plant more trees and make it a greener downtown and make it look nicer. It's aesthetics, but there's a lot of people that agree with that. So I think you need to entertain the fact that further on down, especially, well, you kind of bring up a related question. The utility poles that are in front of the gas station, whatever that is there, what, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna move those utility poles? Or are you gonna build the sidewalks in front of them or? Because um, right now the utility poles are in the street. From, from the police station to Hayden Row, there, there would be no more utility. No, no, I'm talking about the other section. The other side, you know, they would stay on the northern side. Uh, and they are. So, how are you going to build the sidewalks? Where, where are they going to pop up? Uh, there, there's locations for them. We, we've um, already laid out, with, we still need to do a utility walkthrough. 
with the, the private owners, the private utility owners uh, through, throughout the limits, because we already did one walkthrough with them, and then we were looking at from the public safety up through Hayden Row for, for going underground, but we need one last walkthrough with them. They, the poles are gonna have, the poles are gonna be moved. The poles are being moved, so yeah. we're gonna be paying to move the poles versus the, going the underground. The, 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 the utility poles that have to be moved are, are responsibility of the utility, and 50% is reimbursed by the project. Do, do we have any feel for what percentage it would cost to move them versus actually putting them underground? I don't have that with me tonight. Especially it seems like that's you, just a pass. say from the right. public safety to, to Wood Street, yeah. we, you know, that was not something we were okay. really we were charged with looking at because it... Now, John, that, that's not a... Moving those utility poles and keeping them above ground is, is not a town cost. It's not a town cost to do that. Okay. So that's that's a zero. portion that there'd be no cost to the town for utilities from public safety. To okay, but if we were to put them underground, that's a town cost, that is what you're saying? Another, okay. Okay, understandable. So, yeah, no, I just wanted, because I know that it's been cut back because of the mm -hmm. cost of it, only doing a certain section, so I was concerned what's happening with the rest of it. Which, <coughs> like, it sounds like we're going to move those poles back, and we'll have a, a spot there to put a sidewalk and curbs and stuff. Yes. But, yeah, but th at some point in the road, down the road, we may have to redo that. Just a thought. I'll let you manage that. <laughs> yeah, no, and just uh, as a side note to your defense, I'm sure you've gotten a lot of different suggestions and um, ideas different from one board to the next board to the next board, so I'm sure it's quite a challenge for you guys to. Uh, a lot of similarities to most of the comments. We're okay. trying to develop a, a, a hit list. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so I think that's all okay. I had for utilities. A basic question What? And I keep on thinking of underground utilities. I was thinking of Sandy, et cetera. How does the historic flooding at the corner of 85 and 135 <laughs> impact the underground utilities? Where we've had. I'm looking at Dale, and Dale can. I'll give you the history if you'd like. Has it been 45? There has been. repair of the drain system between that comes from the back of Coelho's through um, the cleaners. That, that driveway is a big 48 inch uh, uh, drain pipe that was there. It was more of a <coughs> stream that was, you know, Culvert. covered over with, with granite blocks. A few of the granite covers had collapsed. And that drain system had been blocked for years and years and years. The town, maybe five years ago, replaced it, five or six years ago, from uh, behind Colella's yeah, to again. the main street uh, with a new 48 inch pipe, I think. So, um, and, and there hasn't been any, any backups since then. We've had some significant rain events. There has. So uh, hopefully, you know, that, that might have been the, the original problem is that the capacity of the, the system from Colella's to main street had been significantly reduced and was causing flooding out of, I think, the system here. There's still a problem if it's not maintained. In there. There, it did flood one other time, and it's because of maintenance. They t tend to forget to go in there and clear it and keep right. it clear, so there was a tire that blocked it. Huh. So, so it there has to be maintained, and it still is a, is a problem. Just to remind the DPW to maintain it okay. and, and, to, and to cut it down as the trees start growing in it. Um, but it, there's two 48-inch pipes now, so it should take care of the capacity. Don't to okay, further? Uh, just, a, <coughs> just a clarification question, Mr. Chairman. What is the plan going forward here over the next, let's say, leading up to town meeting in May? Because it seems like there's a lot of discussion just within this forum here. And I'm curious in terms of, are you coming back here? Are there public, more public forums planned? And maybe piggyback a little bit on Amy's comment in terms of communication, advocacy. What is your plan? Do you have a plan? I don't know. <laughs> the, the, the next public meeting, public hearing, is going to be a MassDOT public meeting. The, they, they coordinate it, they schedule it, um, they run the meeting. The HP is there and will probably do the presentation of the town boards. That will be, a, again, a, a town wide. It's, we've been trying to get MassDOT to plan that. We're hoping to get it done 
before the end of this year. Um, but there's only oh, like one week that might be possible uh, vacation. Th that'll happen. That'll allow VHB um, to, to tweak some of the plans and, and probably go back to the selectmen early next year to, to finalize some of these plans uh, to set them in stone. The project team has been meeting and will continue to meet with other boards to provide input to give them that. If I can offer a suggestion is have that meeting after the first of the year because what's going to happen is it's going to be right around the holidays. You're going to lose a lot of people and you're going to get negative feedback that you rushed it through and you purposely did it no, after the first. That's why I said there's only one really week yeah. left for between now and the end of the year. That could even yeah, be I would do it, yeah. my suggestion. And one of the things to be careful of is we don't want to get ourselves in a situation similar to round one on the elementary school, where we were, one, as you remember, we were one of the two towns in the history of where we turned down a state grant and voted it down because of... I, I think it was actually separate issues because of the districting, et cetera. Uh, so I think very. I think the board here is saying as much discussion, as much willingness to change, even if it means delaying something, because the argument that it's going to delay, which was the same argument as the elementary school, it went down in flames. So that argument that we've got where this far along and it's going to delay is actually going to, I think, backfire in that people are going, when it comes time to town meeting, are going to vote no. So no, that's I mean, just a suggestion. The holidays and working with Mass to yeah. schedule meetings. No, but I think just generally on changes to the plan that if there is a outpouring of suggestions, the argument that that'll delay it doesn't sit well in this town from historic <laughs> basis. But let's see if we have a final round of questions going around. I have a format question. Um, it kind of, Fran asked an excellent question, that's what I was going to ask, but the second half of it is, are, are you guys planning to come before us again, or is this our only direct face-to-face -face as a board and a project? And um, I don't know the answer to that. Can we formally extend an invitation <laughs> after the DOT meeting to come back and you've changed it to come back and talk to us again? Can I ask what the specific ask is at town meeting? Where it's state and federal money? Well, how does that process work? The, the, the select, I mean, the, it doesn't have to be a town acceptance town meeting for a grant. The town can accept the grant through the selectmen, um, which they come around. So this does this plan doesn't have to go before town meeting at this point. I'm no lawyer. Um, <laughs> I know um, for for any borrowing that would be needed for the project, it would have to go to town sure. meeting to accept this. Um, so the utilities say somebody, would have to. Say right? somebody gave the town ten million dollars to do the undergrounding. You know, my experience with the town, both selectmen and town manager, you know, the, the town this project would go to the town. To be accepted as presented, even if there was no money um, being asked. Um, that's just my opinion. Um, that would ultimately, I think, would be up to the selectmen. They decide they want to go to town meeting to to approve a plan um, that has no borrowing for it, uh, like say a master plan or something. <coughs> go to town meeting to be accepted um, just as a document. Chair, uh, being that the, that could be the case, and as we are elected board with some oversight of planning, um, I would like to suggest a couple of motions. Uh, if we're, I, I don't know if we. I'd like to have you guys come back, but I don't know if you will come back. To to that point, uh, can we just schedule them for sometime in the future, just to put it on the calendar? That would, that would be that would be very very acceptable. Yeah, it just we just don't want to forget about it. So we have we're a scary bunch. I, I have like half half Actually, of my list pretty on, pretty on question. Pretty friendly. Yeah. <laughs> Do we want to set that the um, 
I mean, I would, I would, I mean, sometime after the NASDAQ meeting would probably be the best productive. Yeah, since we don't know when that is, it's hard to Can we ask right? to be formally notified of that NASDAQ meeting? Will. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think notices go out to the yeah. boards and meetings. Okay. All right. So what we'll do is we'll invite process. you back okay. to the first available meeting. It might not be the first Some meeting in after January, the January into January. After you schedule the mass out meeting, you and I can talk about when okay. you. Sounds good. Ahead. Thank you, Jim. Sure. Just and a reminder: there is no board approval action. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So it's just all right. it's True. informational purposes only. And, and I would suggest <coughs> there, if there Frank has additional comments that he wants out now. Well, I haven't gotten to you could, No, I would say you could give them directly to Dave at a later date or email them to Dave. I'm sure he'd be willing to accept comments via email. Okay. Sure. Great. Any further comments from the public? The board? Yeah, that's fine. Absolutely. Any further comments from the board? Uh, one last comment. Could my, my point being is that uh, I really would like to keep the crosswalk across from the respite center. It was hard fought for to get, and I, I don't want to see it go away. It's, an, it's there for an important reason. Uh, a lot of people use it, and um, it, I think it would be going backwards if we lose that. Uh, I would like to suggest serious consideration of the topic Gary's talking about with the uh, painted bike lanes as opposed to separate bike lanes, painted bike lanes on both sides, like it is in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Um, where the area is a little bit heavier traffic, they put rubber poles up that can be driven over if they need to be, but it's a good visual to keep people out of the bike lane uh, if, if, if they can. Um, I have a little bit of questions in the future about new sidewalks all along. I mean, it seems, it seems to be like we don't really need all along the whole project. I'm just looking for ways that money can be saved. Um, we already do have traffic light controller software in our current four corners light system and I don't see it being used and I'm very confused when he says that we're getting all new lights and blah 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 all new and it's like great it's Christmas again but I don't understand why we're not using what we already have uh, for the four corners and this is kind of like the fireworks with the grand finale at the end. Yeah, this is a boom, boom, boom. <laughs> and I really need to see Pleasant Street addressed in this project. That intersection is very busy, very congested, and it's, it's not considered at all, which is upsetting. Okay. And if I could suggest, I, I think that's a, a statement. If I could also suggest one follow-up that the board would consider and follow up on what Muriel, Muriel requested is if we could see the analysis on what the traffic improvement is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This may be... You know, send that well, the traffic the studies, as as we right. asked for, in the analysis of what they've done. Yeah. One quick question about the okay. Let's do meeting. it quick. Quick. My questions uh, last about okay. One yes, minute. but your your procedural questions are twice as long. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so somebody may know better than me, but I thought at town meeting that they applied for nine million dollars for to do the whole length of the project for the undergrounding, and that was voted down. I think I just wanted to be clear about the whatever the amount project. was. It was yeah. larger so, okay. scale. So, yeah. so I think we're looking at going to less this time for I, the next I town meeting. Okay, I've, uh, that question's been asked many times, and uh, again, it, it was a, a council had a response uh, that I I don't have on me, but I'll make sure. It, again, it's it's going to go on one of the frequently frequently asked question lists that we that our consultants are developing for us. Thank you. Yeah, that's okay. good. I was just trying to no, make sure I wasn't all wet there. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, guys. I'll see you in about a couple months. Just with 2012 that we voted down the undergrounding. Okay. <laughs> if I can, business be considered by the board at any time during, I'm going to kind of reverse things a little bit. Um, Zach update. Um, you start, Jen, I'll jump in. Um, so Zach's had um, several meetings. Um, they've, in your package I gave you their work plan today, uh, as you can see, they've talked about several items. Um, they voted to recommend some, you know, just general changes to the bylaw that will uh, coincide our regulations with um, new state regulations for uh, protection for building permits and special permits and um, the length of time to exercise a special permit and the increase of fines under zoning violations um, so you'll be getting that language at some point in the next month or so um, 
Then they also have asked staff to draft some language on interior lighting, regulating the interior lighting for commercial uses, um, which become external features, I guess is how we're saying it. <laughs> um, we don't really have any lighting bylaw to speak of other than the standards in our site plan. So Elaine and I are trying to figure out how to work that one out. And then um, they're asking us to draft some language on revising the accessory family dwelling unit bylaw. I was not at the last meeting, so I don't know what the specific ask is. Um, I don't know if Frank yeah, can speak to that. I, I, I do, look, from a um, detailed perspective. Right now, it's approved um, for an accessory dwelling at, of 800 feet. Um, mm -hmm. The thought was, um, do we want to look to expand that? We did an analysis of about 18 other towns around the, and the general consensus give or take was that 800 is about right so the, the recommendation is that we're going to kind of keep it at 800 where it's an exception it could go to a thousand which is about 30 percent of an existing house all right so without getting into too much they want to kind of keep it but in, in certain situations where the the main dwelling is let's say 4,000 square feet or larger that they would increase it up to a maximum of 1,000 feet uh, or 1,000 square feet on that one um, we've, they've also voted to recommend to the planning board to revise the uh, section 210-125, which is the conversion of residential property, which um, previously allowed the conversion of uh, one unit to up to four units. They changed that to reduce it to up to two units and require that one of the units be owner-occupied. Um, so that's one of the things that will be coming forward. Um, they also voted to expand the hotel overlay district. Um, basically, <laughs> basically, all of South Street to the town line um, with a 700 foot buffer zone to any residential district. And then um, uh, Parkwood. I right. Right. Which is, right, all which is the north rest up there Parkwood, by Caliper, up in that area. Up in that area. And then they were they eliminate eliminated a section on Lumber on Street, lumber. basically this so this shape of Vermont. <laughs> it's like the right. so back corner right. piece. So what they wanted to do is kind of keep it more towards South Street and that um, over by Caliper, and then that Lumber P Street they wanted to eliminate that Correct. Uh, from a hotel perspective. Correct. But the primary thought was the really larger area of property would be on the South Street, but with an expanded buffer from any residential. Um, neighbors or abutters that would be Correct. in that area. Yeah. So Ali and I have worked on some maps, so we'll be seeing those shortly. Um, and then they also voted to um, increase the maximum building heights in the industrial districts um, by removing the reference to stories and just referring directly to the height right. limits. Um, they increased all of IB, industrial B, to I believe 60 feet. Um, and then um, I A, I believe, is all 45 feet. Yeah, that's right. So um, they're still discussing things like solar farms. Um, and I think they still want to talk about a couple other things. Any thoughts on solar farms? I wasn't at the last meeting. So yeah, it really hasn't really gone anywhere yet okay. with the discussion. Um, I will point out the fifth one down, the regulation on tier lighting. I didn't want to do a, a do we do shout outs here? I'll do a shout out to Muriel. She brought the initial <laughs> <laughs> idea, which I thought was a, a, a very well, and that was well received, um, to be able to uh, reduce um, um, the, the time that the lights are on mm -hmm. after hours. Mm -hmm. So I believe it was, um, the recommendation would be, I think it's one or two hours after closing. Why not right at close? What's that? Why not write it? I think for employees to like yeah, finishing think, up and stuff. Well, when the right. last employee leaves, though. I think they use the kind of a general litmus of 60 minutes after the close of business that the lights would go off at I that see. point. Okay. And again, we can kind of take that and tweak it, Mario, but I think mm -hmm. that. I just, it, I, the, the point is to not use it as an advertising or, or it, no. beacon when the business is not well stated. in operation. Right. Uh, but I think, you know, Jen's point, you know, give people some time to kind of close up shop, but it's yeah. not going to be one of those things where you close at five and by 11 o'clock, I'm still driving by and yeah. I'm seeing the beacon. Yep. <laughs> and we won't mention the beacon. No. <laughs> uh, a suggestion, because yes. I've had a discussion with one of the newer restaurants in town and, and some of the employees to close up, is we have that, I think this, um, on some of the projects is an hour after closing, the parking lights have to go out 
and I've actually heard from the employees that we are still do a cleanup after an hour and I have to walk dark in the parking lot to get to the car. Kind of like us and Miss I was going to say, when we leave here yes. after 10. <laughs> when we leave here after 10. So I think take that into account. There's got to be some wording. I suggested that if it was an issue for them to come back and address it. But They um, all have little smarty pants phones that they can yeah. beam themselves to. I think it. part of it is a security I mean, concern. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, I feel unsafe sometimes leaving here, even with everybody in the parking lot. Yeah. You know, it is dark, mm -hmm. rather dark, dark, and you don't know. You don't ever leave by yourself, though. Do you? you know, Kobe usually always at least walks out. Yeah, yeah. 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 but yeah. still. Uh, and I think there's a differentiation there on lights for safety and, mm -hmm. and those yes, things versus right. uh, lights that are tend to be it's more hard advertised. It's hard to be aware of your surroundings if, you, if it's not lit. So. Uh, but I'll definitely I'll, I'll mention that, bring that that up. Any other comments? Well, just just also just to note that there, I think there's only two more meetings scheduled because of the shortened time frame for review process for this upcoming town meeting. We've got two more meetings scheduled this year to get stuff on for May. Anything else will be discussed will be probably for future town meetings. What are the last two meeting dates? Um, the 6th and the 13th, 13th. of December. Thank you. Mm -hmm. If I can ask a question, uh, to Jen or Jen. Thank what you. was the thinking between behind uh, making buildings higher uh, for residential buildings? Mm -mm. It's not it, residential, it, it's industrial. Just industrial, and I don't think it was necessarily making it higher, it was eliminating the, the flooring. The uh, floors, we did right? increase mm. the height in one of the districts a, to well, just B to make it consistent. B. Yes. Yeah, um, I think it was um, the IB was increased to make it consistent with the hotel overlay district, um, if I remember correctly. And that was brought up by the Chamber of Commerce as you know, just a way to try to bring more tenants and fill up so some of those buildings. That was a, that was a thought. I think Scott was. And it's, it's also a more sustainable way to build too. So sure. procedurally, can I ask? Um, <coughs> so these will be brought to us, and we'll have a public hearing, and we don't have to send them all for which town no. meeting. No, oh, no, correct. we, we vote, vote on each one. Yes. Okay. You Perfect. would be the sponsor, so you would decide what goes to town okay. meeting. So John has to go in front of that the town meeting, <laughs> and typically. And you, friend. More, <laughs> the more you put forward at town meeting, <laughs> at right. times, the less you get through. That's true. So it's carefully deciding uh, what it is. And if you present something that has a lot of opposition, they may all go down. So, right. sure. you know, it's, it's kind of playing it by ear on what's going to get, get approved at meeting. Anything else? Any other comments? Just procedurally, um, when we have our public hearing, can we have a slide or on, I, on each of these to explain to the public and, and to us, <coughs> since we've got an overview of it, you know, more, details. more details? Because we have the exact wording comes in. Right. And yeah, we've you'll discussed get the exact when we get closer articles. to the dates. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you get if you want more information, that, you have to let me know what you're looking for. Yeah. Well, sure. I think like for the lighting, it, it could be illustrated maybe. Yeah, I think what may be yeah. helpful. What may be helpful <laughs> I don't even too, understand it. So. Okay. <laughs> we can also maybe have Elaine um, come to one of these meetings here, and yeah. I'll, I'll provide some context to in color, but to have her as well to provide some detail, <coughs> more sure. of the, the the legalese detail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, things with a map, obviously, could You'll be bring helpful. The map, you know, so yes, yeah. yeah. all yeah. that stuff will be here. Right. Yeah. yeah. There was one thing that the, the group did discuss, and it was almost an ask of the planning board, although it was not necessarily in writing, was that there are, have been some members of the Zoning Advisory Committee that have not shown up. One member. One member at all, but a couple members have been there once. Yeah. Um, and the thought is, is there uh, the op option for the planning board to send a letter to those individuals, individual, um, to ask them to resign? <laughs> to the, from the uh, Zoning Advisory Committee. I don't know if that's within our purview or if you just let it run its course. We kind of knew there would be some degree of self-selection. But the more this. people, if some don't come, if there's a month or two come, that's, that's kind of... And you thing. said there's two meetings left? I think there's two meetings left. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, it were, if we were having trouble getting quarum, it would right. be an issue. I would we, say so issue. We have not had trouble getting quorum. We haven't. We've had at least a minimum of, I would say, 13, 12 to, yeah. usually 12 to 15 members. So. Addressing that because we we were saying there's nothing in place on the 20 members. If we want, how do we define what's the procedure to define a number and yeah. codify is probably the wrong word and define it. 
So what there, there is sub ad hoc committee of this board, and so this board can set any sort of standards or regulations or requirements of that committee. Um, I suggested in some discussions, I think with Muriel, maybe some other people, that we wait till after this particular zoning advisory committee has yes. finished. It's at least its work for this year um, before we get into heavy discussions about limiting numbers and that yep. kind of thing. And then that maybe, you know, sometime in, you know, late winter, early spring, we, not we, you guys as a planning board talk about how um, you want to establish the ZAC going forward um, and, and that kind of thing. If you want to establish an, a limit of the number, how you're going to choose mm -hmm. them, what criteria you're going to use, because inevitably mm -hmm. you're going to get more, that if you say nine people, you're going to get 12, 13, 14. Right. How are you going to make that choice? Is none of that in place? Well, nothing? Right, right now it's, it's no nothing. Yeah. What well, might be better, and we also talked about starting it earlier, so that's not Yeah, and yes. so like if we want to put together okay. sort of a schedule. One of the things we might want to start on is looking at surrounding communities. Places. What do they do that yeah. communities that work you know that having have spent time on looking at it see what's efficient we can compare different community options and sure. you know Jen based on friends. experience Jen has friends. right i have a question uh, to the chair for frank uh, what is your opinion as a chair of that committee representative of the planning <laughs> board i'm oh. not the chair who's the chair Mr. Gattino. Oh, okay. I am not, and neither am I the vice chair. Well, as a planning board rep, what's your opinion of, the, of that ask? About the membership level? Of, of them asking us to. Not a good idea. <laughs> but I'm, again, I'm, I'm sharing. I don't think it's sure. really within our purview to ask somebody to resign and they voluntarily you know, submit it. So. Two I mean, to go. Technically, two it is within your purview, yeah. but, I mean, but I understand yeah, what you're saying. Yeah. I just want to make that clear though, like we could if say. somebody never showed up to a meeting and it was like a committee that was like like a design review board that was like mm -hmm. ongoing forever and you were having that kind of issue and there were only five, seven people and you couldn't get quorum, like that, like I could see that, but this I think is a different situation. And this situation. framework's a little bit different. Yeah. Right. I, and I think John's question, the broader question is, is there a framework? Yes. Yeah. That, that we could potentially yeah. do, yeah. 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 or do you do just draw names? We're open to stealing from other communities. <laughs> <Right. laughs> <Right>. Exactly. <laughs> Rather than reinvent the wheel. the wheel. All right. <laughs> <laughs> See, Cambridge paints by things. <laughs> <laughs> Any other uh, questions related to Zach? But overall, it's a good group. Yeah, it, it's worked out pretty well, and I think John and you know Gary, you could opine as well here on this. I think John's tried to. Do a good job of, of drawing uh, people's um, opinion and not necessarily just saying, "Hey, here's the, the the direction going forward." And some people have been very, pretty vocal. Um, so I think the 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 spirit has, and we've tried to really kind of instill at the beginning of the spirit of, and it takes a little bit of work, but to try to um, use the spirit of collectiveness, uh, and we're trying to all do well, um, and not necessarily it's my opinion is better than somebody else's. So I think. Over time, it's 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 really kind of uh, coalesced pretty well. Um, I wish it was unfortunately a little bit longer. Uh, we've got two meetings left, and it's a little bit it's tricky. So we're trying to cram now as much information as possible. But anything anything else you want to add? Is it, is it Since you asked. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, so this is my first time on the zoning advisory committee. Just my opinion: twenty people is way too many. Um, I, I just think that it decreases the efficiency and. Given that we have a very limited window, I think it's it's just I don't know if we need 20 people to get a broad representation of, of opinions on things. Um, and I guess along those lines, I I feel like thus far we've been very reactive, um, and that we're reacting to frustrations in town or kind of specific incidents. And, and I haven't seen us um, talk about much that I think is is more forward looking or more long term. And that's, and we just haven't even gotten to it yet. And in reality, we're not going to get to it because we've been dealing with other things that I just, that I personally find to be more reactive. Uh, well, it's, it's a tight year, and next year will there be more time, and mm. hopefully less people, more time. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for okay, volunteering. Thank you. All right. thank you. Absolutely. And thanks here. for your feedback. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Any other f comments? Um, master plan. Can we just approve them? Okay. Approve the minutes. Yeah, why not? Minutes. 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 Second. Okay. <laughs> Any discussion on the minutes? 
David. Okay, let's take a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Aye. Abstain. You didn't vote. Yeah. Yes. Abstain. You're abstained. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need me, do you? Were you misquoted? No, I don't know. That was two meetings ago. Right. Yeah, but it might have been a meeting. So you're abstaining? Does it matter? Well, no, she's decent yes, over the minutes. For the record. Was, did you abstain as well, John? No. Okay, okay, thank you. Yes. okay, master plan, implementation plan. Uh, Jennifer and I spent some time going through, looking at the items that kind of immediate need rather than some longer ongoing uh, specific dates, et cetera. And it might pay to go through and either by teams or individuals is assign either a team of people or one person, per, depending on how you want to do it, is look at some of these items and then kind of report back and on an ongoing and do it that way. Um, so Jennifer, do you want to kind of walk through and discuss it and then we'll sure. look for volunteers? Sure. So, um, like John said, we broke it down um, into what we thought was immediate need, uh, mostly things that are, you know, 2020 or sooner. Um, and if I can hop on one, yep. just one thing to, to kind of follow up on your comment. One of the things I think we all see in reactive is that I'll take the in interior lighting as a thing. It's reactive in that we, nobody ever thought somebody would do it. <laughs> we didn't think about it. Yeah, you know, we didn't think about it. So I think as we look at these items and start thinking about we can't act on something that's not codified, so to speak. If, if somebody wants to build the ugliest building downtown and it meets all the code requirements and Zach walks, not Zach, um, design Sorry. review walks out because it's the ugliest building but they still meet all the requirements. And it's not in the historic district. And it's not in the historic district. We can't They're stop it. Meeting. Because if we don't approve it, we can be sued and they win. Mm -hmm. So I think thinking ahead as much as we can, especially maybe using these as the key, is then look at this and then start suggesting changes that, that may need to take place. Okay, sorry. It's fine. So um, that being said, so I guess if you want me just to go through each item yeah. individually, okay. So the I see um, what I want to do. Uh huh. I see what I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> so the first item is um, the planning board should require development applicants to identify what town services will be required to serve new proposed development. Um, that's the first part. First part. The second part is then prepare a semi-annual report of anticipated service increases for submission to the town manager for capital and budget planning process purposes. Um, and why do you touch on? Yeah, so I think the first part of that is um, more something administrative that we would just put on like the application applications that people fill out um, so we can handle that sort of in-house, I would think. Um, but I think how we pre would prepare a semi-annual report of anticipated service increases, and if somebody wants to get together with somebody else, maybe or me or whoever, and talk about what services we want people to be talking about. Is it just water, sewer, infrastructure, or is it public safety, now that we're having some issues with fire? Like, is it those That's kinds cool. of things, right. too? Yeah, so I don't know if somebody wants to take that one on to you know, work on that with me, or? Since this might be one of the least sexy ones, we can work on If nobody else wants to, I can work with okay. Jennifer. Well, since it's easy, you think? <laughs> yeah. Is that what you just said? No, I don't think it's going to be easy. It's sexy. trying to get us sexy. Oh, sexy. 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 Okay. It's not um, sexy. No, I think that that's a, that's a wonderful add yes. to the sure. process, so I appreciate okay. that. All right, so I'll put um, myself and John on that. Okay. And the next one is um, create a wildlife corridor overlay district to protect and enhance important wildlife habitat areas. I'm being honest, this is actually one of my goals for this year with um, Elaine. So um, if somebody would like to help me with it, I'd be more than happy because I haven't even started it yet. <laughs> so uh, what goes um, into that? I don't even know. My first uh, step was going to be to try to find out if anybody else in the state has one because okay. I've never heard of it before. So you're just trying to find out what like what kind of wildlife exists in town 
and yeah, I where mean, they live? Well, do we want to create an overlay district to protect those habitat areas, meaning certain development can't happen in those those corridors that would harm certain habitats. If I can hop in, the small example is the discussion we had the with the solar panels oh. and having that cut through oh, for the animals, for the animals to go. this is an overlay district. Right, but I mean that's the minute right. one. This is now extending it that looking at through town, if you look at the town as a big solar project for lack of a description, that right. we should be providing through ways for wildlife to move through town. You want to take that one? Throw my hat in. Nice job, Rufin. Thank you. Okay. And I'm available. You know, I'll work with you on that. So that's true. Okay. The next one would be to review and improve or eliminate the flexible community development bylaw so that it works as intended. So this is the bylaw that requires, it's basically our inclusionary bylaw, it requires affordable housing production for projects of 10 units or more. Um, you know, there are some pieces of it that don't always work as we intend, so somebody wants to take a stab at reviewing it and maybe getting some other inclusionary zoning from other communities and comparing, contrasting, and, and seeing what works, what doesn't work. Anybody, anybody? Do we know what um, doesn't work? Um, I'm uh, I don't have it in front of me, so off the top of my head, I don't have it. But I can certainly, whoever does it, I can certainly sit with them and go yeah. over that. I'm interested, Jennifer. Okay. Rand? Thank you. I'm not sure why, but I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're thrilled about well, that. Yeah. So that's awesome. <laughs> Will you help me? <laughs> Whatever works. <laughs> Just as a, without mentioning, I know of some projects where we had affordable housing where it was specifically marketed in a way that it wouldn't somebody wouldn't do it as affordable and therefore the amount could be paid in and then a related party ended up buying the house so there's ways people have used to manipulate right. the system this, the, here's the reason why i'm interested in this developers have skirted this for a long time mm -hmm. yep. they'll put in the money because they're building their mcmansions and they think that oh well I'll put I'll develop some money here maybe we have it we have a fund right what are we doing with that fund are right. we really doing it for the benefit or advocacy of those people that uh, financially can't afford because mm -hmm. right. um, my fear is we're bifurcating the various areas within the town sure. to the detriment I think of a more inclusive town sure. environment sure. that's my advocacy and right. and looking forward to the next census when we even though we've done sort of the calculation out and it appears that we're going to be Good still for. under our 10 percent you know over it. Oops, over, over, sorry, over our 10 percent if we keep just saying yes you can do a payment in lieu of eventually that's going to hurt catch us. up with us yeah right so we want to well and to your point too to have a plan i mean maybe the payment is a great idea for now who knows if there was a plan in place to um to add some attractive unique in individual housing within right. the well, existing well, housing. The town is not going to construct. Well, we, I we shouldn't say the town is not going to construct, but I can't see the town in the near future constructing any housing on its own. So if we you have, have a developer. We have converted housing, though, to affordable housing. Like at the lake, one is a, it's a really great example. Or if there's property that becomes available downtown, mm -hmm. right, right, for mm -hmm. affordable housing. And that, that would be, I guess, in my, my mind, mm -hmm. a way or a, 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 um, a good allocation mm -hmm. of some of that funds. Mm -hmm. Right. But sometimes if you have a developer and you have this in place and that's their requirement, why not take advantage mm -hmm. of that as well? Mm -hmm. I agree. Yep. So, so we'll look at that, Fran. That's Thank awesome. you, Jennifer. <laughs> H8 is clarify that assisted living and retirement homes uses will not include full kitchens so that they may not be counted as separate dwelling units in the U.S. Census or require that a percentage of the units must be affordable. So this refers to a new um, regulation under the U.S. Census that um, anything with a kitchen, a separate kitchen, is counted as a separate dwelling unit on the census. So everything at um, Golden Pond, I think, if they have their own, I don't know if they have their own, some of them might have their own kitchens, they would be counted as, as separate units. We specifically 
at what's the development on the south side of East Main Fair, Street? Fairview Estate. Fairview. They do we not specifically have their own and we specifically had them remove, I think, the oven or the burners. Yep. So it couldn't ever be considered a, a kitchen. kitchen. Right. So that they couldn't count Full those kitchen. 150 right. whatever units towards the U.S. Census because right. those could start adding up towards our base lumber for our 10 percent mm -hmm. or the other option is to make the a percentage of them affordable mm -hmm. so, so that um so that would be a zoning change as well so they want mm -hmm. to talk about that why why does it need to be changed as opposed to how john said it was from a discussion with the planning board they well, i think if it's required in the zoning that there not be kitchens then it's it's easier on you guys is you can't al you don't always have the option to condition something you know what I'm saying? That was a special. So in other words, they agreed to it, but if they didn't right. agree, if they to hadn't it, agreed to it, right? Right. So and so this is too late for this oh, next coming town yeah, meeting. Yeah. So we're talking yeah, 2019. Right. Yeah. We'll, we'll say there's a whole new project that's similar, and they want oh, there'll be a whole wing with people that want to have their full kitchens, um, and then that would trigger into our count say 100 units mm -hmm. and then well 10 percent of those should be affordable and then that would be their requirement to meet right but we don't have that language right now that that 10 percent of those would be required would be affordable so that's in this the, type of establishment this okay do you know what right. i'm saying yeah mm -hmm. if i want to why don't we do that and let's, let's do that one Somebody else wants to volunteer, right? I was I was about to volunteer, but okay. I think you're better for it. No, I I, I will help. No, I don't okay. want you to you feel like you have to do them all. Okay. That's a that's a that, that looks like a sizable one. Okay, I'll take the next one. I was going to say, put your name on it. Ed four is to organize planning information clearly on the town website and make it user friendly so that citizens, businesses, and developers can understand the processes more clearly. Find individuals to speak with if they have questions. So I understand Amy <laughs> has been a big proponent of this, and I get that. The only caveat I would add is that the town is unveiling or a rolling website, out a yeah. completely new website um, within the next several months. Um, and so I would argue that we don't want to do a whole lot of this until that gets done. But if you want to be the point person Definitely. when that gets done, you know, I, I mean, obviously, somebody like myself or Elaine's staff will have to be in house to do that. But you can work with us uh, oh, yeah. to do that. So if, if you want to volunteer for that, we can. I'd like time. to work with Amy on that too. It's kind of it's that ombudsman idea. Is the new website new technology? Do we know or what? No, it's just a new website. Same old stuff. Um, one of the things I want to point out was when we talked to Amy, the Citizens Guide to Petitioning. Oh yes, you oh, had pointed out that it needed help, and I just that. I guess we need to point that out to Connor, but the date is wrong for when you have to submit a citizen's petition because it's an old document he, or probably the previous town clerk made, that says if if you have an idea you want to bring it to town meeting, this is what you do. But the dates are now changed. Uh, I'll, I'll mention it to him yeah. tomorrow. I, don't, I mean, that's all him. I it's on no the town website. I have no idea. Yeah. So it's, what is it called? Citizens Guide to Petition? Something like it's a guide to, for citizen petitioners. Some, yeah. yeah. Okay. I think Elaine was instrumental in putting it together originally. Oh. And it may be pre-charter. No, pre no, it's, it's more recent than that. All right. Okay, I'll talk to Connor about I thought so. Pre-charter okay. update. No, but it, the t timing is still the same. Right? Okay, then the next one is um, preservation of Hawkington's water supply is of primary importance and should be considered in the evaluation of any development or use which may impact aquifer areas. I mean, Irvin? It says funding for a consultant. Yeah, I think the idea was that we would um, look to a consultant to um, <coughs> evaluate the water supply. I don't have my master plan in front of me, but I think um, maybe current use versus yeah future use. But if Frank and Irfan want to look into that one, they can start and then see. Well, right, right. <laughs> Just as an FYI, the two of open space is the way we've approached it. Is the two major areas where we would recommend further acquisitions. This is one of them. And the second is an extension of or expansion of areas that are already set aside. What we didn't want to do was 
to kind of spot open space that lets concentrate. You I know, would also think wildlife quarters would yes. play big in right. that if that well, was a successful right. effort. Yeah. Because we're very dependent on the, I mean, the water supply is, we're on our own. Okay, so the next one then is provide incentives for owners of large parcels to maintain their land as open space, provide technical assistance and information about tax and other benefits that are available, prioritize that residents, prioritize properties that residents value, such as the Huffington Country Club, Fishing Game Clubs, New England, Laborers Training Center, other stadium land, and ecologically sensitive areas adjacent to Lake Mathmanock, Lake Whitehall, and Hockington Reservoir. So this is probably going to be a little bit of like going out and talking to some of these people and engaging interest and letting them know that the town would be interested if they ever wanted to sell or do any kind of conservation restriction or anything like that. So it's going to be probably some. So it's Seems like a little bit of a marketing sort of thing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could, mm -hmm. I could help with that. Okay. <coughs> Anybody want to work with Amy or yeah, with Dave? Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, the next one is require aquifer recharge. Implement methods to recharge groundwater as land is developed, such as requiring that a percentage of a building lot retain natural ground cover, including paved areas and calculation of maximum lot coverage and requiring on-site stormwater recharge. I think this was going hand in hand with CFS3, we thought, right, John? Yes. Yeah. So Is that already a requirement, on-site stormwater management? Um, no, there are some options to do some off-site stormwater management okay. in certain situations. Okay. Did, Irfan, did you raise your hand for that? Or? Well, I was just saying, it seems to go hand in hand. I mean, if Frank and I are doing the water supply. I mean, it seems to make sense. It would be dealing with the aquifer recharge as well. Two? Okay. Yes, indeed. Thanks, Perfect. <laughs> uh, you started that trend. Right? <laughs> 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 He's just returning. <laughs> He's serving the ball back over the net. <laughs> but I mean, I think it's, it I, I don't know work. how. I mean, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, for no, us, you're for right. Someone else be doing that. Uh, okay, the next one is to study ways to create lower priced owner occupied dwellings for first time home buyers, such as through special permit process for smaller lots, possibly with limits on the number of bedrooms and subject to availability of town water and sewer. Does does that connect in any way, Fran, to your effort to look yeah, at Yeah, you know what, I was looking at that, Muriel, and I'm trying to find I mean, I think there's probably some tangential connection there. I'm, I'm putting your I name down. I, 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 I don't think, but I will help. There's I'm interested in doing it. I'm actually, I'm act, I actually have a little bit of a philosophical difference of this one. Well, so I just want, so this one is not necessarily um, affordable units yeah. or units that would get us on the subsidized housing inventory that would get us to the 10 percent mark. Right. This is more, you know, a variety of a variety of housing choices yeah. for. You know, um, people who grew up in this town yeah. or first time home buyers who yeah. want to come back, those kinds of people, you know, people who work in the town who might want to be a first time home people buyer and live that in the we town. Or it could be the, the, yeah. the senior who has to sell the house. Yeah, so I think this is more of like a, so what I, I'll, I'll, t I'll tell a little story. When I worked in Westford, we called it West Fordable because <laughs> it wasn't affordable. It wasn't Westford prices, but it was West Fordable. So this is, you know, kind of the same thing, like kind of somewhere in the middle of affordable versus, you know, what the average, you know, market rate price for a home is. So what is the, the flexible community development is intended to d deal expressly with state defined affordable Correct. housing? Correct. Okay. Well, I'm very interested in that. So there I go, throwing my hat. So you're interested in H2? Yes. I think one of the comments that we get f at town meeting is a lot of seniors saying that they're priced out of. Getting well, I think a, a lot of people are, you know, I, you know, I, I got kids that are aging into, you know, parenthood and looking for houses and so forth and uh, yeah, I mean this specifically talks about first time home buyers so I'm yeah. not sure it addresses the senior yeah. component but that doesn't yeah. say it can't address right. the senior component right. but you know that's, I think they're both two categories of people that sometimes get overlooked is you know the, the first time home buyer and the senior population. It's, so n not to be um, 
is there is there a goal in the master plan to look specifically at I mean this is a uniquely you know low priced owner occupied dwelling for first time home buyers mm -hmm. is there also a goal and I know you didn't highlight it here but to look at you know a more sort of flexible you don't have to look it up now I can look it up too okay. but like a more flexibility of I mean is there a more overarching goal uh, so that we don't necessarily have the you know one at one end of the spectrum or chunks on the continuum but a more um, reflective yeah offering I think across I think the, the goal the house the housing chapter goal in general is to provide a variety of housing styles yeah, okay. and choices yeah. for all residents of the town of Hopkinton yeah. or all future residents of the town of Hopkinton so that was really my question which yeah make sense however to me. we I mean because it talks about it was minimum in scope though wasn't it from what I recollect what do you mean? Like there wasn't, we, we didn't, we, we were more concerned about meeting our 10% at, um, through the master plan and all that other, other stuff at, at some point. We did discuss um, affordable housing and how people were being forced out of the town and, and issues of that nature. But I don't know if we put any resolution to that in the master plan at that point. No, and there's not necessarily any resolution that would be in the master plan. The master plan is just a guide to get you to the place you want to be, you know. So that's how you plan for the mm -hmm. future. So I think, you know, if you read the chapter in its whole entirety, I think it, it would give you an idea that the community looks for a variety of housing choices mm -hmm. for all different types of people. Yeah. It's the spirit. The spirit of it, yeah. But you're right, so we I kind of interrupted no, you, Fran. You have a philosophical objection or difference between I just have a difference with it. I just have a difference <coughs> with it. I think this is a little bit of... Um, yeah, I'm just going to the town. I think it's... Um, he doesn't want me to live in town. <laughs> I'm waiting to hear what you have <laughs> no, to say. No, you know what? It's, <laughs> I guess I just I, I look at it from a different context, and I, I, I'm probably going to spend my focus on H6, and that's the flexible community development piece. And I think we should all respect that. Well, I, 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 so I, I wasn't asking to challenge you. I was asking to be just a, per, just a personal, uh, yeah. just a personal yeah. difference. So, That's all. Um, the one thing that I uh, is a continuous um, challenge, and, and over time maybe it's the challenge has changed or it's been addressed better, but is maintaining um, affordable units over time also so that we don't put all this time and effort into achieving affordable units and seeing them uh, dissipate because we don't have a process in place to hold on to them that's effective. Mm -hmm. so. We'll talk a little bit about that after mm -hmm. one. Perfect. You want. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And so then the last one on the immediate list is to work with property owners in the Elmwood Park to revitalize this old industrial park. Well, it's going to be a big hotel now. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Actually, <laughs> if, if, if you talk Treetop to anymore. if you talk to um, Parsons, they, I think they're already working on revitalization, mm -hmm. and uh, they're doing. I mean, they've already got the building active down back. Oh, the actual building. The actual building is okay. is got like eight businesses in there already. I mean, that's awesome. Um, so they're working on on that aspect but um, you all might think that I would be jumping in on this one but um, and I want to apologize to the board for not stepping up and offering my services I've got a lot going on in, in other areas that are commanding my my attention so um, I humbly apologize to the board for not stepping up but with that being said I, I, I do believe that the revitalization of that area is being already um, working in, in, a, in a good format right now. So how much you want to go into that, that's up to you guys. Well, it, it's similar, if I may, it's similar to the treetop development plan um, It was presented to us, so kind of a kind of like a teamwork between a developer and what the, what the town wanted. and. Um, and you know it that that didn't work out, but um, I'm glad to see that something is good going going on there with the developers. Uh, but there's more that can be done with that area. So well, if they yeah. have other plans, if there's ways that we can 
help as a community, help the citizens, help the neighbors, help the uh, other neighbors and businesses. That be you know that's I think that's our goal of, of this item. Sure. And to that point, um, I'm sure that you know every like that that's all reowned now. There's a lot of land over there that's all re reowned, and they they haven't even begun to think of how they're going to expand on that. Um, they're just trying to occupy right now. And again, like you said, to your point, is that going in and helping would, would help us get the knowledge of what their intention is and more cohesively correlate between the public and, and them. But again, it's their land. Yeah. Can you guys educate me on this tree top development? Well, that's historic. <laughs> that's when it was the historic, when they were doing the district a couple of years ago, the idea was this: they wanted to go higher Tree top oh, development. Okay. Uh, so, so is there anyone that wants to jump in and maybe reach out to Parsons or anybody else in that that property owners to do it together? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll do it with Frank. Okay, good. So I understand your your business is getting off the ground, and I'm, I just joined a new company. But I think between us, we can. We'll Ooh, everybody's got new enterprises. Yeah. And I like it. Um. Okay. Can I ask you, for, just because it's in my nature, sorry, when are we going to revisit this and come back with some work product? I would ask if we could do it after the first year. Well, I think that makes sense, but yeah. could we have a, uh, truly? Yeah. Well, why don't we, we schedule it for either the second at? meeting in January or the first meeting in February? Okay. What, do you think we will have done anything by then? Or just like to have some sort of report, oh. some sort of research, some sort of plan. Some right, sort so of why do we do the first meeting in February? I yeah. think that's a little better. Yeah. yeah, me too. Just that gives December, you December really and So January. the farmers are watching the hen house. So. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of the fox. John, he's very Oh, sorry. sorry. Um, I just want to applaud the planning board for taking a fairly broad, kind of non specific master plan and turning it into, I think, things that are actionable and, and forward thinking. So thank you all for that. Um, thank you. And, and I, I have a, a question. Um, if a citizen wanted to propose something that they felt was in line with the master plan, how would that citizen go about doing so? If it's one of these, well, I'll do everything through Jennifer. <laughs> Submit to Jennifer. <laughs> No, I mean, that's the, the thing, because then that gets disseminated to all of us. So if you've got a specific suggestion, you should go through is Jennifer. It, you get you on the agenda as well, right? If it, if yeah, if it's that. something. 1-800-JENNIFER. Yeah. And work it that way. If it's one of these items, then she'll disseminate it to the team members who are working on it, and they'll contact you. Okay. If it's a different item that's on the master plan that you have a suggestion on what to do, well, bring it up with. How about even a different item that, that is in concert with one of these that somebody has taken a lead on? I, I would suggest maybe reach out to, I mean, if it's an idea that is in concert with something that is already happening to, reach out to the person. I'll, I'll reach out to Jennifer. It's, I mean, going back to bicycles, I, I think it would be great to have a, Do you do anything with bicycles? I know. I know. <laughs> um, it would be great to have a designated bicycle route yeah. Through town, and I think that that lends itself to connected neighborhoods and alternative transportation. And this doesn't mean that we need bike lanes everywhere, but um, there's a lot of things we could do to, to become more bicycle friendly without any infrastructure changes. So, um, could that kind of fall under a trails committee? What's that? Could that kind of fall under trails committee? Well, well the, the trails, trails, trails committee is specific to the to the to the rail to the railway. Yeah, and it doesn't, doesn't cover. All there, all what exactly is a bike route necessarily for a town? So, so the what I what I've envisioned is it's a combination of, of you know, it's, it's it's looking at um, it's a I guess the changes would be increases in signage for um, bicycle safety, uh, and it's an effort to try and sort of give people a, a, a designated route of which there would be increased bicycle traffic, um, where it's safe, um, where it's 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 desirable riding to do, and then you're kind of pushing people that are riding bikes for recreation into that designated I guess pathway. So. Okay. And then long term, if there are um, road improvements or other things, and that's part of the designated bike route, then if there's other infrastructure changes, then there's an opportunity to make improvements to it to make it more bicycle friendly. So. Okay. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you. I like it. Thanks. We don't have an all encompassing trails committee, just the upper trails. Yeah, not, not yet. There's a trails club. Yeah, but oh, they everybody has different. <laughs> There's no uniform one yet. Mm -hmm. Any other business? And I just want to point out, December 18th, I suggest to add a little levity as the ugly sweater. <laughs> and that was John's suggestion. That's my idea. Mine, so let's, I wrote let's it try down. to think of something. December 18th. You know, there isn't enough pressure on us. Uh, I know, I know. We're not, well, we're not going to pick a winner. So it's... <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're not? Oh, come on. Oh, I thought it was a contest. No. I had prizes picked no out every day. So if there's no new business, business a motion to adjourn. Sure. Moved. But our next meeting is when? December next 4th. Next Monday. Next Monday. See you all. All in favor? We have Aye. a site walk. Aye. Yes, and there is a site walk on Saturday yeah, for Whisper Way. At where are we meeting? You're there. meeting at the parking area for the trail. Walk. Up, up Whisper Way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank, thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for joining us. Kobe will be back next meeting. We hope.